Good evening. Uh, welcome to the South Burlington Development Review Board of May 18th, 2021. My name is Dawn Philibert. I will be chairing tonight's meeting. And with me are other members of the board, in including uh, Mark Baer, Alyssa Eyring, Jim Langan, Stephanie Wyman, and Dan Albrecht. Also with us in attendance from the City of South Burlington, Marla Keene, uh, Development Review Planner, and Delilah Hall, our Zoning Administrator. So let's look at the agenda. And um, those of you who have the agenda in front of you will notice that we ask that if you're um, to mute your audio during the meeting and also turn off your no, mute your video, turn off, no, mute your audio, turn off your video unless you're speaking with the board and you're representing uh, an applicant. Um, that way it's far less confusing and we don't get the kind of audio um, feedback that can sometimes happen. So thank you for that. Proceeding on the agenda, are there any additions, deletions, or changes in the order of agenda items? Are there any announcements? And are there any comments and questions from the public not related to the agenda? As you know, at the end of each uh, applicant presentation, we leave some time for public comments, but I'm wondering if there are any uh, que questions or comments from the public not related to the agenda. Okay. Um, we're now going to have our reorganization of the board and I will turn the helm over to Marla, who will share this portion of the agenda. Thanks, Dawn. So I am temporarily chairing the meeting for the purposes of reorganization to prevent conflicts for the chair providing the, presiding over the chair election. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite nominations um, and then we will have discussion. Um, and then if there is more than one person nominated for a position, um, we'll hear from each candidate about their interest in the position. Um, then we will invite public comments on any of the nominations. And then the board will hold a vote um, and then once the board has voted, we will proceed with the elected chair presiding over the meeting, or Dawn, if the chair so chooses. Um, <laughs> it means it's someone else's chair and they are not prepared. So um, I would first invite from board members if they have any nominations um, for chair, vice chair, or clerk. Do we want to do them individually or sort of all three at once and go across? Um, why don't we start with everybody, all three at once, um, okay. and then if we have multiple, we can discuss them individually. Okay. Um, then I'll take this opportunity to nominate Don Philibert to chair, Dan Albrecht to vice chair, and Alyssa Herring to clerk. Um, are there any other nominations? Is there a second for the slate of candidates that Mark has nominated? I'll second. Okay. Um, so, Dawn, if you were elected chair, would you accept the elect the? I guess I don't know the position. For the glory of it, I would. <laughs> Thank you. Dan, if you were elected vice chair, would you accept the position? Yes, I would. WWE. It's not there. It's, oh, it is. Oh, it's a dot. It's a dot. It's not there. It's always a dot after WWE. I think like someone needs. I think someone needs to please mute their audio. I think they're on the phone, so I it's a little them. harder was, to do when you're on the phone. It was caller number four, and they've been muted. Boom. Thank you, Delilah. Yeah, I understand. It's a little harder when you're on the phone to find how to mute yourself. Or what about a landline? Whoa. 
Um, can I can I ask that you speak if you're able to speak up at the moment so I can identify your phone line? Okay. Another time. All right, Alyssa, if you were elected to be clerk, would you accept the position? I would accept the position. All right. Um, is there any public comment on any of the nominees? If you're a member of the public and you wish to comment, you can um, turn on your camera, unmute your microphone, and say your name. All right, hearing none, I will now do a roll call vote. Jim, are you around? I am. Okay. Like Jim is caller three. All right, so roll call vote in no particular order um, for all of the candidates that Mark has nominated. Mark Bear. Aye. Don Philibert. A thumbs up from Don. Jim Langan. Aye. Alyssa Eyring. Aye. Stephanie Wyman. Aye. And Dan Albert. Aye. All right. Congratulations. You are now the official chair, vice chair, and clerk. They can you change your names on their uh, IDs. And we will oh, have champagne wow. when we go back to meeting in person. Yep. Yes, I want to be the, vi the VC, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Don, would you like to um, resume the meeting with agenda item number five? Don, I think you need to unmute. I suppose I have no choice, but thank you all. Thank you. Um, a couple of reminders before we start hearing from applicants. Um, thank you to all of you in attendance, on the phone, watching by video, and um, we appreciate your joining us and your interest. Uh, this meeting is being recorded, and anyone who wishes to participate in the hearing should sign the virtual sign-in sheet in the chat box. Um, and you would do that so that you can and uh, be registered as a party in case you ever want to appeal a decision by the board. Um, if, if you are on the phone, you are welcome to email Marla at M-K-E-E-N-E -E -E at sburl.com and provide your contact information. Uh, again, please mute your phone or your computer so that we don't catch the ambient noise in the background. And we will um, we will move on to the first project. Okay. Uh, the first project on our agenda for review tonight is reconsideration of preliminary and final final plat application SD2102 of South Village Communities LLC to subdivide four existing undeveloped lots totaling 23.2 acres into eight lots ranging from point three acres to 14.1 acres, construct 22 homes in 11 buildings on lot 11.1, 1.2 acre, and 11.2, 1.1 acre, and construct a permanent farm access road and pavilion on lot 11C, 1.2 acre. The recommendation is limited to condition number 26 pertaining to affordable versus inclusionary units and condition number five pertaining to wetland restoration. At 840 Spear Street. So this is a reconsideration of a former board decision. And according to the rules, uh, the rules we will just focus on those two um, identified issues that the applicant wants us to reconsider. The first one. So Patrick O'Brien was here and then during elections, we lost him. Oh dear. Um, so I don't know who is here for the applicant at this time. Thank is you anyone for else here for the applicant? Noticing that. Is anyone here for the applicant? Hmm. Is he on the list? 
I saw him I really. suppose he would be caller four. It certainly didn't sound like him when we could hear someone talking. No, he was on camera. Caller four was not right. him. Right, he was on camera. Patrick? Yeah. Hmm. Anyone well, else? Do you have his cell? I have, I have his cell. I could call him and see what's going on if I mute myself for a minute. That'd be yeah. great. Well, Marla is um, doing that. Um, I will again um, restate what the chair had stated, which is if unless you are participating in an application at the moment, please mute your cam, your mute your microphone, and um, turn off your camera unless you would like to speak and be recognized by the chair. It just makes it easier for folks to follow the proceedings. Um, thank you. Thank you, Delilah. Um, I would like to be recognized by the chair to speak. Uh, uh, sure, what is your name, please? My name is Larry Robert, and I just want to uh, have uh, anyone who's joined recently or uh, after you made the announcement that you would have to um, send a chat, registering your name within the chat for any, um, just a log that you've actively been in, if you were involved in this uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what, what is the question? It's really more if you can repeat to um, everyone in attendance that um, you have to log yourself into the chat to be recognized within the, uh, as attending this meeting. Okay, I think- At least that's what I understand. Yes, I think you've just repeated it, so thank you for that. And if you're not able to do that, you can also um, email Marla Keen at M-K-E-E-N-E at s -burl dot, remind me what the- We're dot coms. Dot coms, thank you. Um, uh, if you've just joined and you're waiting, um, we are waiting for Marla to contact the applicant that we're supposed to review next to see what happened to them. They were here and then they sort of disappeared. So we're trying to find out what's, what's going on. So I was unable to reach Patrick. I called his cell and got his voicemail. Um, so if you, it seems like, Potentially some folks are here for the gazebo application. Are you folks ready if we move on a little early? Um, for the for John Larkin Inc.'s application for Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes, I'm sure we are. I know James yeah. here. We appreciate the opportunity to jump ahead. That's him right there. Okay, so we are moving on to the um, gazebo application, correct, Marla? Yeah, um, and then I guess we'll jump back to South Village if we hear back from Patrick. Maybe I'll send him okay. a text too. All right, so moving on to agenda item number seven, uh, sketch plan application SD2114 of John Larkin Incorporated to amend a previously approved plan for a 23,282 23, square foot 41 concrete care facility. The amendment consists of demolishing 3,340 um, 3, square feet of the existing building, constructing a 12,770 square foot addition for the purpose of adding 12 additional resident apartments for a total of 57 and other interior reservation res Re renovations, thank you. Um, reconfiguring access and parking and my printer cut this off, adding 6,970 square feet from an adjoining lot for the purpose of constructing a memory garden at 1510 Williston Road. Who is here for the applicant? Uh, I'm Cleary Buckley with Smith Buckley Architects. I'm James Finley Sheriff with Wagner Hodgson Landscape Architects. Okay. If you're muted. 
Skip, you're, you're muted, Skip. Hold on, Krebs and Lansing, Skip McClellan. Okay, thank you. So this is a um, sketch plan review, which is a very high level overview of the project, which it is not a hearing, um, and it will give the applicant uh, an opportunity to present to the board what they have in mind and kind of get a read of where the board may or may not have some concerns, where staff may, may or may not have some concerns, whatever. So there's no need to swear people in, um, but I will ask if anyone needs to be recused from us. Actually, Stephanie, you're recused. And, uh, does anyone else need to recuse himself or are there any disclosures? Okay. Um, applicant, why don't you give us a fairly brief overview? We've read your, we've read the staff report, but it would be helpful to have your perspective on what you'd like the board to hear and know about. Great. Uh, thank you for uh, hearing this application. Again, my name is Cleary Buckley. I'm Smith Buckley Architects. And the facility is um, two buildings um, that are both housing uh, senior citizens. The um, um, there's inefficiencies to this, the design right now that we're hoping to um, remedy with this project. Uh, the plan is to connect the two buildings uh, with a central wing, um, take down a little bit of the um, what's called the north building. Um, it's it's a little counterintuitive, but the building on the uh, west is called gazebo and the building on the uh, east is called north. <laughs> um, but so anyway, uh, the plan is to take down um, a wing that's a uh, one story wing that's on the east side of the north building, which currently houses um, a lounge and the kitchen for that building and some maintenance facilities. And w right now there's a driveway that bisects this property and it runs right in between these two um, residential structures, which is not ideal for a lot of reasons. Um, <clears throat> but um, both buildings have separate entrances that are not very uh, clear or, or easily identified. Um, they have duplicate um, sort of support functions like kitchens and maintenance things. And so the idea is here is to really um, make one facility that is more efficient, that has, um, I, I think that Skip sent you some floor plans um, after our initial application that, that may be helpful to look at right now, uh, but. No, I did not do that, Clary. She doesn't have that stuff. Oh, okay. Well, um, anyway, if you if you look at the image that's on the screen, that this this central bar that's running um, horizontal on the page um, will contain a new um, entrance. It'll have a pedestrian entrance that faces Williston Road, and then the vehicular entrance will come in on the east, around to the, I guess, the back of the building. And um, there'll be a covered drop off there. And the two entrances sort of come into a, um, a common lobby area, which will be very helpful for the staff and managing this facility just to know who's coming and going. And then within that central bar on the ground floor, there will be a common dining hall, a common kitchen, um, the administrative offices and some um, like a lounge and a recreational area. Um, and then on the second floor of that, that central wing, there will be um, resident apartments. And uh, we are trying to create um, an aesthetic that is, um, that is consistent and sort of works with the existing buildings and that also creates um, you know a recognizable front facade to Williston Road 
Um, even though people arriving by car will will come in the driveway and come around to the back, we think it's important that this this facility have a presence on Williston Road that that speaks to um, entrance and a front. Um, in a, if you if you scroll down to that elevation. Um, the, the covered area on the left uh, is in front of the dining hall. So there will also be places where the residents can come out um, and either have their lunch or, you know, tea and coffee, hang out. Um, so that's, that's kind of the big picture is um, we, we see this as really um, a big improvement for this facility, consolidating common um, resources, connecting the two buildings so people don't have to go outside to interact um, between the buildings, and also just making a much more efficient um, sort of programmatic layout so that um, the people know who's coming and going. And one other thing that I should mention is that um, on the ground floor on the, the gazebo building, we would like to create um, a memory care unit, which is for people with um, Alzheimer's or um, other, you know, cognitive issues that um, sort of prevent them living independently. And associated with that is this memory garden, which you can see on the screen, which is um, a place for the residents to be able to go outside, interact with nature in a controlled and enclosed safe environment. Thank you for that overview. Uh, before we get started, I have a couple of questions that will help me conceptually understand this better. So are the two existing buildings, were they built at the same time? And are they owned by the same person? They, they are owned by the same um, entity. I do not believe they were built at the same time. Um, in fact, I think that the uh, gazebo building, which is the one on the left, has actually was built at one time and then added on to. Okay. Um, so did this also used to be Pillsbury Manor and now it has a different name? Yes. Yes, okay, all right. And are there two different levels of care in the building or, or you know, some independent living and some, well, if you have memory care, you probably have like um, assisted living. What, what, what is the general? Um, so uh, I think Christina Espe is on um, and Christina, do you want to talk to that? Sure. So right now, they're, both of the buildings are licensed for level three residential care. And so we would like to keep the level three residential care license um, and then get on, have a special unit license to be able to have memory care. Because right now, what happens is a lot of people, once they reach that level of care, we have to ask them to move. And that's a really difficult thing. So. Sure. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. So is the entity that runs the programming different from the owners of the building? No, I'm an employee of John Larkin Inc. And John Larkin Inc. is the owners of the building. Okay, got it. All right, thank you for clarifying that. So, um, shall so we I proceed? have a question, if I could. Yeah. Um, sure. If they could, and I've spent some time with the plan, so I kind of know the answer, but I think it might be helpful. If they could explain what part of the building is being demolished and how the entrances exist today versus what's being proposed. So basically just paint us a, a more clear picture of existing versus proposed. Sure. Um, I don't know if we have a drawing that it, um, illustrates that very well. Um, can you zoom in on the one that's that's on the screen? It's so, um, yeah, the, the the building on on the right, you can see that it has a bar that runs more or less up and down the page, and then about uh, about midpoint on the right, 
there's a there's part of that building that goes east and um, has a little dog leg um, south. Yeah, thank you. So that part that you're tracing right now is the part that we're we're going to remove and we're just going to keep the rectangular part that runs um, up and down on the page so that that part is is the intention is to remove that part that has been outlined just now right now the entrance to this this building is comes into that part that is going to be removed and it comes from the top of the page so you come in the drive off of Williston and you come up and you, you you find a place to park and then you come back around the back of the bar that runs up and down so right yes right there is where the the main entrance is oh. and then for the other building the main entrance is if you look about um, one third of the way up the bar, there's an indentation right there. Yeah, that's that's the main entrance for that facility. And then the driveways are off of Williston Road. There's two driveways sort of here and here, right? Yes. Well, is the one to the left active, Skip? It's one's an entry and one's an exit. Okay. Yeah, the one to the left is a fire access that has a chain, a plastic chain in front of it now. There's a third one further to the right, right at the property corner. You can see it, Marla, if you follow to the to the right-hand side of your sheet. There's a third curb, curb cut there that's not being used. And, and that's the one that we're proposing to make the main vehicular entry. Though right. we, would, we would maintain the other two for fire um, department emergency access only. Yeah, so that, that's the one where we would like to create the new vehicular entry. Okay, thank you. I just thought it would help the board to understand sort of the existing context and what's how it's- It's very helpful, Marla, thank you. I actually drove in yesterday and it took me a while to kind of figure it all out, but that was very helpful. Okay, does it, do any other board members have any questions before we start going through the staff comments? I was just curious if you could explain what exactly a memory garden is. Sure, I can do that. Um, so there's a sort of a long or not so long history of uh, memory gardens throughout facilities like this. And what it does is it really gives the, um, the patient or the residents with memory care issues um, a place that they can safely go outside. So the memory garden would be enclosed so um, and, and sort of well landscaped on all sides so no one could get lost. The idea is also to have sort of a, a circular or elliptical path. Again, this kind of gives comfort and people don't get stuck in corners or in um, sort of strange spaces. So essentially it's, it's, a, it's an outdoor experience tailored for people um, uh, with that condition. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, Delilah, might you be able to post the um, staff comments on the screen, please? Sorry, the wrong one came up. Um, hold on a moment. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Delilah. 
Okay, staff recommends the board ask the applicant to confirm the total existing and proposed unit counts. Would that be you, Cleary? Uh, sure, although I have to confess that I'm at home and I don't have my notes in front of me, but the, um, the unit counts that are listed are incorrect in, in oh. the um, report. Um, the the number that we are proposing, I think, is is eighty four. Skip, do you do you can you confirm that? No, but I do. I do have a note in front of me about what's there. I can tell you that is North has forty units and the gazebo has thirty two units today. Yeah, so that's seventy two now, and and I. I um, Larry, I think you're right. It is going up to between 84 and 87, depending how the, the square footage is shake out. Yeah, it's, you know, as we get into really figuring out how to renovate the interior, we may pick up or lose one. But really what we're talking about is about 84 units. And um, we think that the the number in the, um, the report just one building, perhaps. Um, it's. I'm not quite sure how this error happened, but that's that's what we have. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. I have a quick question. Quick question sure. Go ahead, Dan. Um, what impact to the residents um, will there be in terms of will they have to move out or while construction goes on? Uh, that's a that's a great question. Um, I, the short answer is we don't know right now. Um, to be honest, um, COVID has slowed down our our design process significantly. Um, nobody was interested in going in to really do a lot of um, existing conditions work or or anything really until we got to a point where, where it was safe to do that. And um, uh, thankfully, I think we're, <laughs> we're there, um, but we've, we've got a lot of work to sort of just go in and figure out exactly how to phase this and make it happen. Um, but, you know, I think the short answer is yes, there will be dis disruption. Um, construction is disruptive and, and I don't see any way to completely avoid it. Um, but I, I would also say that um, everybody on this team really cares about the well-being of the people living in this facility. And, um, you know, we're, we won't, we're not callous to that disruption. And, and um, we're going to be working to, you know, try to find ways to phase the construction that minimizes that, yeah. that disruption. Well, presumably they have contracts, right, of some sort that allows them to be there. So yeah, the, the contracts they're they're month to month. Um, so really, they can be canceled at any time if somebody wants to. But I think probably once we have a concrete plan in place, we will take some rooms offline and not rent them. I mean, also with COVID, it's kind of slowed the number of people we have moving into the facility right now too. Um, especially with the Gazebo Apartments building, there's when that building was originally. Um, used for senior living purposes. It was an independent building. And then it kind of slowly converted to residential care as people aged in place and we got that license for that building. So there's very minimal common space there. So a lot of the residents desperately want that common space that we're trying to add on to. So. Does that answer your question, Dan? Yes, thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, number two, staff recommends the board discuss with the applicant whether the proposed height will be below the 20, 28 foot maximum. Without consideration as a plan unit development, height waivers are not allowed within the R4 zoning district. Additionally, buildings within the R4 district are limited to no, not more than one story greater than any building on the abutting lot in the same zoning district within 150 feet of the subject structure. The proposed structure appears to be two stories and would therefore, I lost the words, they're off the screen. 
<laughs> so oh, it, I'm, I'm sorry, I, Don. I recall that it said it would therefore um, be in compliance or something to that effect. Um, the, the project will comply with the height um, limits. It's drawn at 28 feet to the midpoint of the sloped roof right now, which um, I, I believe is how you measure the height. And um, we will design it to comply. And, and um, it is two stories. Okay, thank you. I think I have my own screen now. I finally was able to get it. Okay, any comp questions about that from the board? Okay, comment number three. Staff recommends the board ask the applicant to describe the proposed modified programming, including which entrances will be used in what way. I think you've already done a lot of that, but is there anything you want to add to that? And board, do you have any questions about that? I guess the, I, this is going to sort of jump ahead to some of the other staff notes, I think, but um, there's an entrance on the south facing side towards Williston Road that will be pedestrian only. And then on the rear, there's um, the vehicular drop off, and that would be where emergency uh, vehicles would come as well. And then um, there's also um, a loading and service entrance on the north side, um, which which will feed into the kitchen that's right there. Um, and so that's there's a question coming up that asks us to talk about what's going to happen there. But that's why that entrance is in that corner is because it's where the kitchen will be. And so there will be some deliveries and um, things. Okay. Happen. Thank you. Questions from the board? Okay, number four, staff recommends the board discuss the second comment of the fire chief with the applicant. In particular, will the required maintenance affect whether the project will be able to maintain the currently proposed aesthetic? I can uh, answer this one. Uh, as it stands, there is a, an existing kind of fire access lane that is maintained by the ownership of the facility, and we intend to do that with the two fire access um, spurs, I guess you could call them, coming onto the lawn there. Uh, they'll be snow blown and um, they'll be grass pave uh, or that plastic sort of grass re turf reinforcement system that can handle the um, FD vehicles. Um, so yes, we will maintain those um, and be sure that Terry is happy. Thank you. Comments, question, um, board members? Yeah, Don, can I ask a question? Mark. So um, a question, I, I see that you have coming off of Williston Road, those two, you're gonna utilize those two curb cuts for fire truck vehicular access. Is that a requirement because the building set so far back from the street for fire department ladder truck access? That's right. Uh, Mr. Francis said that there was a situation in a similar facility where they had to literally um, pull everyone out of the room on both floors. So we want to be sure to uh, give him the opportunity to get his trucks exactly where he needs them for this sort of a situation. Okay, because mm -hmm. in the past you know, projects, he's also been concerned about the trees that are planted where he's going to be proposing to set up his ladder truck and the stabilization. And, you know, and I'm sure that the, the, the grass stabilized, whether you use grass creed or some other sort of um, stabilized surface is adequate to, you know, support a fire truck. Um, I guess part of my concern goes to the aesthetic, which is, I understand safety overrides aesthetic, but you're going to have this nice grass pavilion with a nice circular sort of walkway path with these covered, you know, entrances and covered, you know, patios. And the grass creek typically ends up looking like it, it doesn't have that nice green sheen that they always describe, you know. So part of my concern is that you're going to end up with this sort of like a rough road curb cut um, there. And then my second comment or question is, if they do have to access the back, how do they turn around? How do the big fire truck, ladder trucks turn around in the back? 
Yeah, let me start with your second one. We've shown and uh, had calls with Terry and, and tested um, their turn radiuses for their truck. Um, if we could go to the landscape plan, there is a striped uh, zone of, for no parking uh, sort of directly across from the main entrance, and um, that will allow Terry to uh, turn his trucks around. Um, right. In terms of the aesthetics, we do understand um, that grass creek, grass pave, even just having gravel within topsoil and sod on top oftentimes does not look as beautiful as um, the rest of the grass. Uh, unfortunately, we need to have this um, um, this situation for Terry to put his truck there, and we don't want to, um, you know, increase the impervious surface uh, if we can avoid it. So, I mean, we're happy to explore all of the available products. I've worked with several at different stadiums, and and I think they're they're okay and they're very functional. And unfortunately, function trumps uh, beauty in this case. I know, I know. As I said, I understand it's safety over aesthetics, but um, you know, part of me almost wonders if there's a way to do the you know, do the, rather than having these two semi-perpendicular curb cuts coming in, um, if you could use that sort of arched walkway path that goes from side to side and do that as an actual wider stabilized surface for the fire truck access and pedestrian path. So it's always used and maintained. And then when needed, the fire trucks can use it. So they can I think that's these sort of little spurs popping in. That's right. I, I think that's a great, a great um, comment, and I'm sure we'll look at that. I have done several situations where you have a wreck path that is flanked on either side by yeah. you know some sort of stabilized grass product to allow for that. Um, sure. We'll let's investigate that for the next round. Okay. I think that's okay. Thanks, Mark. Any other questions from the board? Okay, comment number five, staff, and this is regarding site plan review standards. Staff therefore recommends the board discuss with the applicant how they intend to use the required minimum landscaping. Right, so uh, we are doing the forensic landscape work um, as warranted in South Burlington. We are, we have a plan from 1993 showing uh, a planting that we will make sure has uh, the correct amount of plants. We have a bill or a construction value um, percentage going towards landscape and also we'll need to take down a few trees for the, um, this central wing. So yes, we will have a lot, a good deal of money to spend on landscape. Um, if you could go to the rendered plan, we've called for you know a good deal of, of, of perennial plantings. We'll plant grasses in the stormwater collection areas to help help beautify beautify those gravel wetlands. And um, I think you know we may even come back to the board and ask uh, for upgraded hardscape and um, you know sometimes. Uh, we're allowed to upgrade the kind of the fencing and the detailing and, and, and use that money towards sort of upgrading the finishes on, on the landscape. So as we've done before, we'll provide a full um, spreadsheet identifying the cost, identifying the cost of the proposed planting, and um, we will get to a place where, where we've um, spent that money. Thank you. Any other John, questions? If we may. Yes. Um, I think this is an opportunity for the board. Um, so I don't know if you can um, skin, skin to a plan um, to provide some, you know, not not correction, but more like advanced suggestions, maybe things mm -hmm. to look at. This is a board that's seen dozens of projects that have to find places to use a lot of landscaping. And if anybody has any ideas, it might be helpful to provide them. Um, I don't know about the memory garden, but that obviously is a landscape feature that I imagine the board would be amenable to considering for your um, budget. And then um, there's the rear of the site. I'm not sure what the function is of properties behind the site and if there's any need or desire for additional buffering in the rear. Can we see the landscape plan, please? Um, hold on a moment. Let me just get that back up. 
while you're finding that, Delilah, all I can say is, and I, I know this is Vermont, we don't have flowers year round, but older people love flowers. And I know my mother was in a memory care facility and they had a, a memory garden and it was full of beautiful perennials. And it gave us a lot of reason to walk around and talk about the flowers over and over again, but it was yeah. joyful. Um, so I think a lot of perennials and even some uh, shrubbery with winter interest. I mean, I'm not a landscape architect, but there are some very interesting shrubs. Right, right. Um, of course, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. We absolutely, you know, want to, um, you know, beautify these paths. There's a, sort of a path around the memory garden, and then there's also a, sort of a circular path that goes off to the, and comes back in the rear entrance. Um, it is absolutely our intention to kind of beautify uh, those experiences as best as we can, um, you know, without placing an undue maintenance burden on the facility that they'll have to carry through, through, in, you know, forever as South Burlington would have it. Um, so, yes, I couldn't agree more. We will beautify this, um, the, these paths. And then as, I, as you can see sort of around the terraces, we have kind of thick beds of, of multiple different perennials. We've tried to suggest sort of flowering trees along the semicircle walk or the arch walk. Um, uh, we will absolutely, you know, max that out. Good. They love butterflies and birds too. I mean, these are really primitive joy, yeah. joys for a lot yeah. of people with memory impairment. That's it. I think we're going to even try and have sort of areas of interactive gardening for them to mm -hmm. be part in as well. So that's absolutely on our agenda. Good. Any other comments or input from the board? Okay, staff comment number seven, staff recommends that the board direct the applicant to discuss the proposed legal arrangement for continued access to 1516 Williston Road and at the next stages of review to more clearly indicate the access to 1516 Williston Road on the site plan. That, that building is currently a residence, it's a house today, and the the access goes right up through that center existing, what's existing today, yeah, right through there. We could relocate that access off to the right-hand side there and maintain that building as a residential house. Okay. Marla, is that is that what you were looking for in terms of a response, the information? Um, I guess we need to see that clearly and if there are modifications to that property um, that needs to be part of the only, the only modifications at this point are some of the stormwater treatment will will dribble over the property line and there'll be an easement required for that. We anticipate that. So that's the only act, the only change to anything on that property. So if I go to the existing condition site plan, I can see the access. Okay. Just while you're doing that, Marla, um, for the board's benefit, this home is addressed on Williston Road. Oh, okay. It is, it is not a Helen Avenue house. It is a Williston Road house. Okay. Hmm. All right, well, make sure that that is very clear at the next application, please. And I think we'll be okay. Any other questions from the board before we open it up for public comment and questions? Hearing none. Um, are there any members of the public who would like to speak? Looks like there are a couple in the chat box. Um, so if you don't mind, I can call on people. That would be helpful, Marla. Thank you. In the order. Let's Great. see. Um, looks like Luke and she Sheila Lefebvre. 
Hello, thank you. Um, I've got a question. It was a mention about moving the cafeteria on the uh, western, westerly, northern. westerly building in the, on the northern side. Can you give more information about that? Uh, so, um, there's the western building, uh, the ground floor will be a memory care wing and it will have its own cafeteria in it. Um, the eastern building, which um, is called north, <laughs> um, the, the current uh, dining area is in the section of that building that will be taken down. And so within the central wing, there will be um, a new dining area for all of the residents, ex except those in the, the memory care wing. Um, and that's, um, if, you, if you look at the sort of semicircular walk that comes off of Williston um, Road, the, the dining area is in this sort of right, the lower right corner of that central wing. Correct, and then the, the kitchen is in the back behind that. Uh, nope, nope, to the lower, or lower left, excuse me, I, I misspoke. So that's actually where the kitchen is, the, the dining area is along that, that area where you drew the line to begin with. Okay. So, that, so the deliveries you were speaking of in the northern port of, part of the building, that's that's where they're going to be, or is it going to be in the, what is now the gazebo um, the, the section where you, you said? The, where, where you drew the, the yellow dot, not the line, but the yellow dot, just above that is where deliveries will come in. Okay. Um, this is a much better proposal than what was originally um, uh, proposed uh, with the driveway or the main entrance being on Gilbert Street. So um, thank you for, for making this, this new plan. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? That's it. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Who next would like to comment? Or ask like Drew Blanchard was next. Okay, Mr. Blanchard. Uh, thank you for doing this. I didn't. This is the first I'm learning of this, and we are immediately and dramatically affected by this. We are the house that is next to the kitchen. So, this is going to have really dramatic change to us. And so, um, <laughs> What is being considered for noise mitigation for what will be a large amount of traffic almost literally in our backyard? Okay, good question. Right. Um, so as it stands, I think there's a solid six foot fence uh, separating your property from the gazebo property, as well as um, a, a strong stand of maple and other trees. Um, what we've done is move the road off of the property to allow all of those trees to remain. Um, so it's our intent to uh, use those trees and the existing fence as a, as a buffer. So. Um, Yes, exactly where, where you're drawing that. Um, and so that's our intent is to leave that fence so you won't um, be able to see anything and then the trees above and um, uh, will we'll also help to, to block and shield the noise. But just to be clear, there actually is no fence there. There's not? There is not. Oh, is that the top part or the, the, the fence stops at the bottom? Oh, it's this property, not the lower property. Yeah, we're pre-victory. We are literally right next to the kitchen. Right there, that one there. Um, I would have, we can discuss this, you know, um, further. I, we obviously want you to be happy with our project and, and yes, we can put a fence barrier and, and plantings in that area to make sure we can screen a, a, as much as possible. That, that, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, um, let's find a way to connect after this and uh, we can work with you on that. Great suggestion. Any other comments, Mr. Blanchard, is it? Mr. Blanchard. 
Any other comments or questions? People, I genuinely don't know, so the it will either this will go back. We've gotten used to the flow of traffic in and out of there. Um, this will be a real change. A fence, soundproofing, something that is a, a noise barrier will be greatly helpful. But, but otherwise, I, I don't have any other concerns. I appreciate you um, participating in this meeting and expressing your concerns early on so that the applicant and the board can take them into consideration. Um, and remember, this is just the very first step. There are other uh, application steps in the process and you'll have other opportunities to um, have public input and ask questions. So thank you. Yeah. Don, that was all there were in the chat box. Um, is, was it, would anyone else from the public like to make a comment? All right. Well, um, is there any further discussion from the board? I could find a way to get off mute in time. I would have said yes. Sorry. Oh, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Who is this? Say your name. This is Pierre Bouchard. All right. And if you go to the the first picture that was on the presentation with the aerial view. Even with number one, slide number one, all the way to the beginning. Actually, that one works right there. Sorry, that, that works. Um, 37 Helen is the top house you see right there. You just put your cursor over it. That's where we live. We have no problem with what, what's going on here. That boundary line has changed. You see the diagonal line there? That's there. That boundary line just was done by uh, Larkin Realty and we are so glad because if you go to the first picture of the overall packet that was put together, can you, page one. That's what it was before. Hmm. Oh, great. On top of our patio. Hmm. So that since has been taken, the diagonal has been put up to the upper left. With that, everything else is, is fine. That was our main concern we had before. So yeah, even go all the way to the uh, cross in the top left, the white cross. Other way. The other way. To the northwest. I got it. I just, it's hard. It's the drawing is not, not, it's not a paving. It, it is noted in the land records. Right. So we read this over, and actually, it's kind of nice because there's really no back of the building. Mm hmm. You have the front and the front, and then you have the entryway in the back, which is going to be basically also maintained. So it's, I was concerned, about, you know, putting dumpsters and, you know, cooling equipment and everything, but there's really not going to be a back of the building, which is obviously the concern of people that are on Helen Avenue. But sure, sure, sure. Back to the neighbors. So I just want to mention that we're okay. We're good with it so far. Thank you, Thank you so much. We, it's always great to hear positive comments and supportive comments. Okay. Does anyone else want to offer any public comments or questions? So hearing I'm, none. I'm sorry, I just have one additional question. Sure. There's that Mr. little, yeah. there's the little bump out space that currently exists. It's between our property and, and Dr. Mike's property. It's kind of no man's land. Mm -hmm. Like a little ear on the, on the right side of the project. What is the, the plan for that? Yeah, did we have stormwater slated for that area with gravel wetland? No, there's the uh, sewer goes through there. That's the sewer easement. The sewer travels from the left building, the, the west building, and it travels or crossways across the site and out that way to the road is a victory. There's, so that's the sewer easement right there. And so that, that's just gonna be left undeveloped. Thank you. Any other questions?
questions or comments? Now, question Marla, for... I'm sorry. Just a quick question. Sure, speaking, Dan. Speaking of dumpsters and cooling equipment and where trash unloaded, those kinds of things, will that location change or? We have that in the same location as it, as it is today. Okay. In, in terms of where Drew's property is, it might be a little bit better because we're gonna be taking away that trash can that's like right near your backyard. Drew, I don't know if you're still on the line, but um, cause it'll be, it'll be moved over to where the current Zebo apartments already has a dumpster. That'll be the main dumpster right there. So, and then you will also have like, the, you know, the delivery, the bread trucks and all the stuff backing up to that area, which kind of backs right up to your backyard right now. So. <laughs> Loading's on the other side. Yeah. Any other questions or comments before we conclude the uh, sketch plan hearing? M Marla, um, I'm not sure if the next step is a site plan or a preliminary plat. It, so we weren't either. Um, okay. And the staff notes were intentionally non-committal because we wanted to determine whether they were going to need to be requesting any waivers or if there was anything that was a conditional use. Um, so this application involves the subdivision of land um, by changing the boundary line of the memory garden and it involves a site plan. Um, so they have two options. They could proceed as a PUD or um, if the subdivision of land m meets the criteria to be considered a boundary line of adjustment, they could submit a boundary line adjustment and a site plan as two separate applications. So I will work with them um, to decide which is the best course of action, but either way, um, the predominant review at the next step will be of the site plan. Okay, great. So we will see you again sometime in the future and I will move that we conclude this sketch plan. Do I hear a second? No voting, please. No voting, okay. No sketch. voting on sketch plans. There are no binding decisions that come out of a sketch Perfect. plan. Okay, good, thank you. We will defend so, that vehemently. Thank you again for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Mar you. You're welcome, thank you. Marla, any word from um, Patrick? Yes, I spoke to Patrick on the phone. He had some technical difficulties at home, so he drove himself to the office and is now ready and able to join us if you'd like to jump back to item number five. Great. Patrick, welcome back. Oh, so good to see you all. <laughs> we wondered what became of you. Um, That's funny, I was, I was at home, I had technical difficulties and none of my children were there to help me out, so I had to run to the office. Right, exactly, I know that feeling very well. Um, I believe I already read the purpose um, of the first reconsideration of preliminary and final plat application, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you with that again. Would you mind um, terribly if I paraphrased? No, do, do paraphrase. All right, so this is, this is a reconsideration of preliminary final plot application SD2102, which is the application to develop lot, oh, to do a whole bunch of subdivision moving around the property lines and to develop 22 homes on lot 11. Um, the reconsideration is limited to discussion of two findings of that already approved decision. One is the issue of in affordable versus inclusionary units, and the second is a condition pertaining to um, wetland protection and restoration. That's all I have. Thank you, Marla. Uh, Patrick, I, I'm sure you were sworn in earlier, but let's do it again, because we haven't seen you in a while. Do you uh, swear under penalty of perjury to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, so, what, do you have any comments to offer in addition to what Marla just said, Patrick? Uh, no, the only thing I'd like to say is that, um, 
A couple things. The word inclusionary, as you know, was uh, put in uh, the approval. Um, inclusionary units are not applicable in the Southeast Quadrant. We call them affordable uh, units, uh, and they come under, uh, they're obtained via a density bonus. So the long and the short of it is using the word inclusionary doesn't make any sense. So we need to use the correct word, which is affordable. Um, secondly, um, in regards to the request to revisit the wetland, uh, it was explained in more detail to me today uh, by Marla, and she sent me a little highlighted drawing. So um, uh, as I understand it, even though Marla, I would ask if you please read me that condition one more time, I believe that I'm, uh, I'm all right with uh, that as already and currently conditioned, and therefore would not to propose to alter it. So Delilah, if you could pull up the staff comments, I think it might be helpful to sort of have up the two conditions um, on the top of page two, uh, and we can review the of the packet uh, for agenda item number five. O two or O, which one? O two, agenda item number five. And I would remind the board that the same issue of inclusionary versus, um, sorry, what's the other term? Um, affordable, it is applies to the next um, reconsideration request as well. So top of page two, please, Delilah. So the two conditions that pertain to the wetland restoration are shown on the plan. Um, one says that the fence that is proposed by the applicant should be expanded, and we can show that um, we can show the image, and I can do the drawing again. Um, and then the second says, within the fence, the land shall be allowed to revegetate naturally, though removal of invasive species shall be allowed. So if you, Delilah, could go to page. Three, please. I can draw what the fence is. Page three or page four? Four, I guess. Okay. Sorry. All right. There we go. If you can just kind of zoom in to just the lot 11 portion, or what is it, 48X portion, so a little bit more. There you go, perfect. So I'm going to draw with a pink pen what the applicant had proposed for a fence. I think. So the pink pen shows what the fence was on the applicant's plans. And the condition, I'm gonna to try to choose a different color, says, because this pink line is to protect the wetlands, the fence should be extended like so. Oh, come on. Like so. There seems to be and a little today. And the lands on this side of the fence should be allowed to revegetate naturally. And the lands on this side of the fence can be mowed and used as part of the lands around the pavilion. So Marla, does the pink line, does the blue line also exist where the pink line is? Yes, yeah, so we, we would be keeping the pink line and adding the blue line. Okay. That's what the condition as written says. And Patrick, what is your concern with that? Why are you, requesting reconsideration um, so there the, the the request for reconsideration really just had to do with the difficulty understanding the northwest east south 
uh, description uh, in the condition, and uh, we were not necessarily 100% clear on it. So, um, and um, so the only thing, and we are fine with it as as now that we know where uh, where it's going to go. But the only concern I have would be that stormwater feature may be required to be maintained, i.e. mowed or, or brush hogged once or twice a year. I don't know if it actually is a requirement, but if it is, I do not want this condition to usurp that requirement. That is a great point, Patrick. Um, maybe the modification should be to condition number six, um, where it says the area south and west of the fence shall be allowed to revegetate naturally, though invasive species shall be allowed. Um, how would the board feel about, I can work with our stormwater department to find a suggestion for how to modify that to allow maintenance for stormwater treatment practices. I'm fine with that, other board members? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I think that's a good approach. Others, any, any objection to that? Okay, so going back to the inclusionary versus affordable issue. Um, so I have a question about down the line, is there, are there any unintended consequences of using one term versus another in terms of perpetually being inclusionary or affordable? Um, are there any legal problems with using one term versus the other? So Dawn, I think this condition was written mistakenly. I don't see any repercussions, but I also don't see a problem of fixing it to say affordable. Okay. Like if they weren't here already for other reasons, I would say it's immaterial. But if you want to fix it, we're here anyway, might as well. Yeah, and, and Don, to answer your question, um, the perpetual affordable, the perpetually affordable requirement uh, stands under both definitions of okay. affordable and inclusionary. And um, I would like to see the word changed because they are both defined terms in the ordinance and inclusionary is not applicable in this application. It's for, right. other, it's for other areas of the city. Thank you, Patrick. You're welcome. Um, so because um, agenda item number six also deals with in the term inclusionary, um, affordable versus inclusionary, are we as a board saying we're fine with that too? You do technically have to open that hearing. I do, okay, all right. Um, I'm fine with the change on this one, and when we ultimately get to the next one, I will be fine with that one as well. Okay. So um, I guess since we're still on um, agenda item number five, if nobody has any other questions, it's time to open it up for public comment or questions. Any comment or questions? The chat box. Uh, this is Paul Foxman. Did you unmute? Uh, can you hear me? I think I've unmuted myself. Can you hear me? We can hear you, but we cannot see you. Okay, so let me get my camera activated. Okay, there we go. I think we saw you earlier. Okay. Uh, Paul Hi. Foxman and uh, my wife Cheryl is here. We live at 86 North Jefferson Road in South Village. We've been residents of South Village for nine years. We were here on the very early wave. I think we bought the, mo the model home in 2012. And our, our home we live in now, we've been here five years. I'm looking at the map of the proposed 11 units on lot 11. It looks to me like there's going to be a curb cut, a road that is going to be exactly across from our house. It looks like Douglas Road, I think it's going to be called. Uh, there's an entrance on East Allen and an entrance on North Jefferson. 
So if you can see that, if you can locate our house, you're gonna see, I don't know if I can actually use the drawing tool to show you what I'm looking at. Yes, you can use the drawing tool. Okay. Um, so, and I would just remind you that we have a limited scope of this reconsideration. Yes, yes, and it, uh, Mr. Foxman, if, um, if your comments don't specifically relate to the two issues being reconsidered, I'm afraid we're not able to consider them. Well, one of my comments does directly relate to the, the uh, preserved preserve land issue. I, I lost the last part. It does. It does concern. One of my one of my concerns relates to the preserved land issue, the ratio of developed versus preserved land at South Village. But that's not an issue we're considering tonight. Am I wrong, Marla? No, the two subjects are this specific wetland on Lot 48X, and the use of the word inclusionary versus affordable. Okay, so that's very limited. What would be the avenue for us to register our concerns about the uh, the entrance to this development directly across from our house where we'll end up being basically in an intersection? Marla, those you. Hearing, unfortunately, those hearings took place earlier and um, this decision was warned according to the requirements um, members of the public did participate and their um, decision was not appealed. So the decisions about that location stands as written. Okay, that's unfortunate, but thank you. Sorry, but thank you for your input. Are there any other members of the public who would like to comment on this reconsideration? Yeah, this is Larry Robert. I live Hello. on, uh, let me turn on my camera here. Um, I live uh, across the street from Lot 11 in South Village, and I've been there for um, almost as long as uh, Dr. Foxman has been. Um, my question has to do with the uh, wetlands, um, specifically, um, is that Lot 48X? Is that the name of the lot? If we could pull that up again. Um, where you were describing and uh, putting in the uh, the fencing in the in the blue and the pink um, line item, there's a um, there's a spot where the wetlands drains into the main road, which is uh, Allen Road East, and uh, that drain uh, runs in the winter time, and of course. In the wintertime, you get uh, thawing and then you get uh, uh, freezing. So multiple times over the last several years, uh, because of the runoff from that wetlands and, uh, and some um, reconfiguration of drainage by uh, SD Ireland, uh, south, that, that whole uh, Allen Road East is uh, treacherous to say the least. Uh, it, it's an ice slick. Um, and so that um, would have to be taken care of. That's one thing. And the second thing is, um, I really don't understand how I hear about this hearing that has to do with um, a fence and um, in the uh, inclusionary or uh, affordable housing, the difference between those two word is words, but I don't hear about how this project has gone through already. Or a building that's uh, three stories tall in our neighborhood that is really should be in downtown Burlington, not in a residential neighborhood. Um, I'm wondering if the um, board could answer that. I will take a stab at it. Um, we, we have reviewed these projects and they were all warned. And I believe as a butters, you must have been notified. Negative. Through your association, but I'm, I'm gonna let Marla speak to this. 
applicants are responsible for notification of abutters. Um, I do have certificates of service and evidence that the placards were posted. Um, if there are issues with warnings, um, there are some remedies available. Um, this is the first time hearing of issues with warnings. I, I can um, tell you I that, that it I might have not be... heard. I have not heard of anything happening in my neighborhood, except for they had some uh, like open house last fall uh, during the middle of a pandemic when I'm working on trying to keep uh, the state of Vermont and all, our whole region of, uh, uh, you know, elderly and uh, patients alive. Uh, and, and I don't have time to come into a, um, a review of some kind or an open house. If that's what they consider they notified everybody, then that's not acceptable. Okay, well, I understand your concern. Um, can you send me an email? I can. Um, and I, just so I have your contact information, my email mm -hmm. address is mkeene -E mm -hmm. at sburl.com. And I will um, speak with Patrick and find out how they do notices um, and hopefully kind of bring the two pieces together. But the board does not get involved in notices, so they're not really going to be able to help you very much. But I understand that. But my other question has to do with the uh, uh, also the um, the drainage in that issue during the winter time. And I, I don't know, Patrick, if you've ever been in that neighborhood uh, in February or March, uh, when there's a lot of uh, you know thawing and uh, and freezing, it, it's treacherous. And you're going down into Spear Street. You're sliding into Spear Street. Patrick, are these roads um, have these roads been taken over by the city? Yes. Okay. So if the roads and sidewalks have been taken over by the city, um, that is an issue that I can speak to our Department of Public Works about. I think um, the Department of Public Works would want to shut off the drainage that's happening because there's no way they could put enough salt down to fix that. As a matter of fact, the city was doing the plowing of that section of the road. The city would come up and they'd plow around up to the green, then they'd go back down to Spear Street. So the city's been taking care of that section for years now, but they can't take care of all that ice. Mm -hmm. uh, Don, may I? Yes, go ahead, Pat. Um, so uh, Mr. Roberts, I think the, the, the best solution to this is um, we are going to be coming in for uh, formal approval for the city of South Burlington soccer field that's going to uh, be proposed um, on lot 11 by the solar field. Uh, in that process, I would envision that uh, that uh, runoff will be um, will be taken care of, so to speak. It will likely uh, be a catch basin installed there uh, on the uphill side of that turn. I do know what you're referencing and you are 100% correct that the wetland does drain out of a low point onto um, Allen Street um, and it does need to be uh, taken into consideration and it will be taken into consideration at that during that application and design process. The wetland was modified three years ago. And there was, a, I remember seeing the uh, excavators there, and I want to know if that was a legally um, acceptable move to do for that wetland. I can only say that I wasn't involved and in that we recently, as of last year, we had the wetlands division out there uh, redelineating and accepting, reviewing that, that delineation, and uh, uh, no red flags were issued that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. So um, my final question is, um, and, and I'm sorry to take all the time here, but this is probably my, my, my best option to uh, get some answers. Um, does, does, do any of you have anything to do with Act 250 and the Act 250 permit process? And how do I get more information about that? So the city has no involvement in the Act 250 process whatsoever. Um, Correct. 
Yeah, I don't, so, I don't have anything to offer you, really. There are some Act 250 permits for this neighborhood that are um, uh, referencing the uh, District 4 Commission. Is that, is, are you considered a District 4 Commission? Who is that? No, District 4 Commission is the local um, staff from the state office for Act 250 that you okay. should contact. All right, I'll contact them. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Roberts, the best way to get your um, your questions answered is to uh, contact me directly at ST Ireland. And my name is Patrick O'Brien. You can call 863-6222, and I will be happy to answer your questions and try to address any and all concerns that you have. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. But I think I'll go to the state on this and, and find out um, what's going on. I can certainly give you their contact information if you want. Just give me a call. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. the time, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. You're very welcome. Are there any other public comments or questions yes. about this proposal? Uh, Hello? Yes. May, may I make a, ask a clarifying question? Sure. And, um, identify yourself, please. Uh, my name My name is Bo. My name is Bo Denham. I'm a resident of South Village and on the uh, Mr. HOA Denham. board here. Mr. Denham, you're breaking up. Pardon me? Is... Hello? Oh, am, I, am I? No. What am I doing wrong? I, I, can, I can hear yeah, you. How about now? Little, am I okay? A little staggered. That's a little better. And now? Hello? We hear you now. Oh, man. Uh, um, Where are the 12 year olds when we see. need them? He can also type what he wants to say into the chat if he's having difficulty with his microphone. Okay, how about now? Is this any better? That's much better. Thank you, Mr. Denham. Apparently not. Okay, uh, just a clarifying question. On the uh, on that map you were showing, uh, where the, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's that? Go ahead, we're, we can hear you. Oh, Mr. yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, just a clarifying question. Um, for the area um, south of the fence that, um, uh, the new section of fence that they're, you're discussing, um, maybe if you could have that map up for a second, and I can. Um, you mean with the red and the blue lines? Mr. Denham? And there, there's a, uh, a, a section of, Mr. Denham, you are breaking okay, up. There's a section of that wetland that goes, it looks like it goes across. Um, Mr. Denham? It looks like there's a, uh, a section that goes across the bike, the rec path um, that hasn't been built yet. Mr. Denham, can you hear me? Mr. Denham. Um, no. I not there, but I lose it delay. again. Say that again, Marla. I think there's a big delay when he's speaking, um, but he no. did hear clearly that he has a um, question. And so it's just a question. I'm wondering about the management of that. You had mentioned that that would be that needs that area needs. Uh, yes, it's the area south south of the blue. Yes. Oh. I'm not hearing you as well. Um, well. You keep breaking up. That's that's the problem. Can you hear me, Mr. Denham? Um, I think this happens sometimes with Kevin Dorn when he speaks. There's just a terrible delay, and it sounds like he's responding, but in fact, if you're hearing something that he said 30 seconds ago. Um, okay. So if he's just asking a clarifying question, I would be happy to speak to him later um, if we could. 
I, Great. I believe I, I know what his question is, I think, um, which, which may be there is a portion of the wetland that uh, goes into the bike path, but that area was, is already filled. Uh, the base is already put in, and that was done under our wetland permits. So we we received approval um, back when this road was built several years ago, and that that wetland impact has already occurred and was accounted for in both our state and federal permits. Okay. Mr. Denham, if that doesn't answer your question, I would suggest you contact Marla Keene individually offline and maybe she can help you answer your question. Are there any other uh, members of the public who would like to comment or have questions? So hearing none, I would entertain a motion to close. Um, the reconsideration and final plan application SD 2102. I make a motion that we close reconsideration of SD 2102 and South Village. Do I hear a second? Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. The, the um, hearing is closed. Now we're moving on to reconsideration of preliminary and final plat application SD 2103 of South Village Communities to subdivide an existing 1.92 acre lot into five lots ranging from 0.14 acres to 0.67 acres and to append point. 1.8 acres to an existing 12.68 acre agricultural lot for the purpose of developing a two family home on each of lots 92 to 95, establishing the fifth lot as a permanent open space and expanding the existing agricultural lot. The reconsideration is limited to condition 22 pertaining to affordable versus inclusionary units, 1840 Spear Street. So, um, Patrick, I think we've heard your rationale, and I'm wondering if board members have any input. Mark, I know you spoke to this, but does anyone else have any comments about this before we ask for public comment? I just have a question. Sure. I know the Affordable Housing Committee has been advocating for the having inclusionary requirements apply citywide, and I just, want some feedback from staff if that were to happen would this language change prevent that from happening it would not um applications are subject to the ldrs that were in force at the time that they were approved um, this condition that they're asking for a change in is actually just um, a section where the reason it, we use the word inclusionary accidentally is because it's a section of the inclusionary regulations that also applies to affordable units so that's why the mistake was made even if the ldrs were to change um, this section would still apply and it would still be only relevant for the include for affordable units thank you any other questions before we ask for public comment, anything from the board? Okay. Any members of the public who would like to speak to this? Hearing none. I, I, I have a I have I have a comment or question. Sure. Please please identify yourself. Um, my name is Will Lanier. I live in 107 North Jefferson. Um, I'm trying to share, there we go. I think my camera's now um, available. 
So just uh, in this, forgive me if this is rather, rather elementary to ask, but so for lots 95 or 92 to 95, this, this new, uh, new area that's going in, um, is this, is it optional that it's, um, affordable versus, not, uh, um, versus kind of what, what's normally been built or has that been decided? It's actually a requirement and Marla, I'll let you explain that, please. Um, it's a requirement. What, what else would you like to know? Yeah, it, it is required, sir. Okay. Um, and then the, the, my second question was, um, with this going in, I, I think I, I tried to ask this last time and then we, this, this uh, discussion was tabled and moved to this date was the kind of the low point where water water gathers that's there's going to be drainage added there and where where will that water go or will that just kind of stay as is um kind of as as the landscaping of this new project takes place i'm not sure we can actually discuss that because it's not related to the the one issue that we've been asked to reconsider is that correct marla um, yeah, so we, I mean, it's a, it's a question, so I suppose if you want to, we can take it up, but it's, we can't really make modifications or have a discussion of things not relevant to that one condition that's being requested to be changed. Um, I think we did discuss this, though, and I think the answer was that there was a stormwater swale that was conveying water away um, to a treatment practice. Maybe Patrick would like to chime in if the chair so chooses. Sure. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, thank you. Will, um, if you, let me give you my email address. It's P as in Patrick, O-B-R-I-E-N at sdireland.com. And I, if you email me, I'll send you the plan set and go over it with you and show you how we're collecting that water so it doesn't continue downhill as it currently does. Okay. Um, so, sounds great. Th thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the public? Okay, I, having hearing none, I would entertain a motion to close reconsideration of preliminary and final plan application SD 2103. Um, Make a motion to have you close reconsideration of SD 2103, 1840 Spear Street, South Village, Lot 48, preliminary and final plan. Thank you, Mark. Do I hear a second? Second. Thanks, Dan. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. This um, this agenda item is closed. This this application for, re for reconsideration is closed. So thank you, Patrick. Thank you all very much. Okay. Turning to our next agenda item. Continued preliminary plat application. Oh, and let me just start by saying, um, Stephanie, you're recused. No, Stephanie's not here. Oh, you are here. Okay. You're recused from this too, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. Continue. Yeah, Mr. Jim, I'm just, getting, I'm just getting back. Oh, hi, Jim. Come on. I get to sleep. <laughs> Uh, um, continued preliminary plat application SD 2040 of O'Brien Eastview LLC to create a planned unit development of six existing parcels currently developed with three single family homes and a barn and totaling 102.6 acres. The development is to consist of 135 homes and single family, duplex and three family dwellings on nine lots totaling 21.8 acres, 19 commercial development lots totaling 44 acres, one existing single family home and 25.1 acres of undeveloped open space. At 500 Old Farm Road. Who is here for the applicant? 
Uh, Andrew Gill, here for O'Brien Brothers. To Evan Langfeld. I don't see you, Evan. Are you just on the phone? Uh, I'm trying to get my screen up right now. I'll be up in a second. Okay. All right. And, and I, would like, I would like to ask, remind people to mute their microphone if they're not on the board or speaking. Thank you. We've got one more too, Don. Uh, I think Scott. Oh. Scott Homestead from Krebs and Lansing Consulting Engineer, civil engineer for the applicant. Okay, good, thanks. So while Evan's trying to get his screen up, um, let me just say this staff report has 50 comments and um, many of them we believe can be collapsed. So I think that it's not as onerous as it might otherwise look. So what I'd like to propose is that we start working our way through the comments, um, try to resolve each one as briefly as possible, um, and try to get through them before the end of the night. And I would like us to be done by 10 o'clock, but let's see how it goes. Okay. Um, this is a, my papers, a continued uh, preliminary plat. So you are, you, Evan and Andrew, you're under oath. Uh, Scott, have you been sworn in for this application? Yes, I, I was sworn in at previous meetings. Okay, thanks. All right, so um, before we start going through the comments, is there anything, are there any brief comments you'd like to say? Andrew or Scott or, oh, Evan, you are here. Okay, good, good. I am, <laughs> thanks for having me. you wanna say or shall we just dive in? I think we can dive in. The, the only thing I would say is that um, I know that there are several neighbors on Old Farm Road that, or I believe that there are several neighbors on Old Farm Road um, that have expressed an interest, particularly on the uh, multi-use path connectivity. And while <clears throat> there were some of those neighbors on the call last time, I know we never addressed that issue and there wasn't any uh, time for public commentary. So in lieu of uh, trying to have them wait through until the very end of the meeting, I was wondering if we could address that item first, just to allow them to, to weigh in as a courtesy. Sure. I have no problem with that. Do any other board members? Okay. And uh, speaking of neighbors, I, I should disclose that I own a property, a townhome at uh, O'Brien Farms uh, or Hillside at O'Brien Farms, but I believe I can be impartial unless anyone has any concerns about that. Okay, um, who, who is here who would like to provide comments for this application? Uh, John Henning, 103 Old Farm Road. Okay, John, tell us, tell us what's on your mind. Well, uh, I've been a resident of South Burlington for 32 years. I've lived in this home for 17 years. And I just, by accident, found out that there was a, uh, I guess you would call eminent domain, you know, right away that 10 feet of my property were gonna be taken for a bike path that would basically eliminate my driveway. So I would have uh, people on a bike path within just a few feet of my garage door. And it's very concerning because I understand an alternative was put forth and rejected by the town, which, you know, the impact on, on my value of my home is probably several hundred thousand with what's being planned to deface my property. So it's uh, very, very upsetting that, uh, and, and uh, by the way, I object to be, be referred to as an abutter I think that you should use the term adjoining landowner or abutting landowner, property owner, be a little more professional. We're not all into the jargon and uh, it needs to be uh, done away with if you don't mind. So as a, as a you know, as somebody that's, you know, impacted directly, uh, economically and aesthetically, but mostly economically, 
I don't know if anybody's ever bothered to drive up and see what 10 feet would do. The blast thing that would have to go, you know, Vermont Gas wouldn't put gas lines in on Old Farm Road because of the ledge. But we're going to put a bike path in? I don't understand that. Especially when there's a reasonable alternative where no one is impacted. None of the families on Old Farm Road would be impacted by the alternative. So I'm, I'm really very, very disappointed it got this far down the track. Thank you, Mr. Henning. Uh, may I ask a question of Evan and Andrew? Sure. Related to that, um, isn't, is what's being proposed within the city's right of way? Can, yeah, I think maybe it makes sense to just refresh everybody's memory on the conversation, just because I don't think we've um, talked about this since our first hearing back in February or March, mm -hmm. if, that, uh, if that makes sense. Just so it's clear what, um, what we've proposed at this point uh, and, and what the comments, Mr. Henning's comments are addressing. Uh, there was a an exhibit that we submitted. I apologize, I don't have. Um, I think it was it was a VHP plan uh, that was our bike and pedestrian connectivity plan. Um, I uh, apologize, I don't know what page it is of your packet, uh, but it might be worth just pulling that up so we could just show you uh, what we've proposed. Marla, I saw you shaking part of the packet. Do we not have it? You're muted. I'm sure it's part of the packet. If there's something that we want to be showing, I mean, it's just going to take a minute. So I did leave bookmarks in the packet, so okay. you can use those. So I can tell you uh, our exhibit number for it. Um, exhibit, I think. Is it page 71? Exhibit 32 of our submission. Try page 71, Delilah. So just to, to kind of refresh everybody's memory of what the, the conversation is about. So this plan, um, if you, why don't you kind of pull down the page a little bit to the, to the portion of Old Farm Road that's outside of a project right there is perfect. So uh, in the first hearing that we had, we showed you guys a bunch of photos of the issue that um, Mr. Henning's talking about with regard to the recommendation of a shared use path on Old Farm Road where the yellow line is drawn on this plan, uh, the proximity of the path to the existing houses and the sort of destruction that it would cause to their front yards. Uh, we had submitted more pictures that we took in person uh, last hearing in a PowerPoint presentation that we could pull up and you could walk through. Uh, we, ha we had sort of had a conversation at the first hearing about you know, the, the sort of needs of our project and the conversation sort of oriented around how are your project, uh, per, you know, project, uh, the people who live in your project going to access sort of like, uh, you know, the amenities on Tilly Drive, the rec path on Tilly Drive, the brick store there on the corner of Tilly Drive that just went in, you know, how are you providing for that safe access? And so we had come back with this proposal that includes a rec path uh, being temporarily constructed from our project border through the Tilly Drive PUD and connecting to the Tilly Drive bike path which gives our residents full access to the Tilly Drive walking paths to the store on the corner of Tilly and Hinesburg Road and does so without any disruption to the, to the existing neighborhood. Um, that's the proposal that we've put forward currently uh, in order to sort of create the connectivity that's necessary for our project uh, without the, the disruption of the shared use path. Uh, and we can look at the images that we had submitted to you guys, um, if that's helpful as well. Thank you, Andrew. 
so yeah, and, and, uh, Don, this is Evan again, just for, for yeah. context too, um, if it makes sense, you know, based on this discussion for a, a site visit at some point, we would welcome that because I think it is a little bit alarming once you see the actual existing site conditions and the proximity to homes and existing garage structures and parking areas. Um, so remind me that then then I'll um, we decided we wanted a shared bike path. Marla, what was the next step in this process? How did we get so here? There was a conversation and the board has heard what the applicant has to say, the board has heard what staff has to say, the board is currently taking testimony or not testimony, the public is, the board is currently hearing public comment. Um, and it is now the responsibility of the board as always to deliberate on what they've heard and make a decision. Um, so until the board issues a decision, there is no decision. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, and to, to clarify, uh, Don, we've not discussed it in a hearing since the initial recommendation to work with a professional firm to sort of try and determine the best way of creating connectivity for our project, uh, which we did. We took that advice, we went and we engaged with VHB and we developed this plan that we thought achieved the connectivity necessary for our project in a manner that was sensitive to the residents on Old Farm Road. That's the okay. plan put forward. Uh, the Director of Public Works, I believe in uh, some of the comments, has said that the advisory bicycle lane proposed, which is the yellow line, is not something that the city is uh, looking to do. Um, you know, that was a suggestion as a way of calming traffic and allowing for bike connectivity. I still think- yeah, I'll just clarify a little bit. It's not that the city is against an advisory bicycle lane in general. It's that this isn't the right location for it. But, um, and I, I only say that because I don't want to like give the impression that we, you know, hate free bicycle lanes as a city. Um, it's more a site specific concern. Well, you faded out sure. there for a minute, Marla. So, so in this context, you know, that was not a proposal that, that was supported uh, by, by the city or by the director of public works, uh, which has left, you know, so the yellow line at this point would, you know, we would remove as part of our proposal. Um, but we would, you know, we're still saying that we've provided the connectivity shown here um, and that you know, we're hopeful that that meets the requirements that the board had set forth of, you know, how are your residents going to get to Tilly Drive safely, securely? Um, and, you know, the issues of the necessity of a shared use path to facilitate the future development of, you know, cider mill and the future connectivity the city's proposing over 189 with exit 12B and everything else, uh, sort of development outlined in the Tilly Drive land use study, you know, that's something that the city can iron out through ordinances and impact fees and through future, you know, future development sort of regulation. Uh, but but in terms of the impacts of our project, we felt this was a good proposal, so. Okay, well, we will um, have to talk about that at a deliberation, apparently. Donna, may, I, may I speak? Other public comments. Go, go ahead, Marla. Um, yes, hi, other this public is comments? another Marla. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Um, Don, I, I had emailed you this afternoon. I'm hoping that you received that email. I'm sorry, what is your name, please? Marla Wiener. I'm a resident of 105 Old Farm Road. I'm coming okay. through as Firefly for some reason. Okay. Can um, you hear me all right? I can. I did not receive an email from you. I, are you sure you oh. didn't send it to Marla? It's in the, it's in the chat. Oh. I sent an email to you, um, Dawn, this afternoon. Yes. Uh, I, I'm sorry if you didn't receive that. I was hoping that you'd have a chance to see what I, what I was writing um, regarding this issue beforehand. Um, so I, I can, um, if I may just take a minute to weigh in. Um, obviously, uh, 
we are very alarmed at at what's being considered for a shared bike rec path. Um, it's been mentioned and pointed out how little room there is in the front of all of our driveways. It just happens the way the houses are built and were built. Due to the ledge issues um, here on Old Farm Road, the garages and driveways are literally a few feet from the road bit. Um, we have been owners of this house for 40 years. This is a very old established neighborhood that even though we understand the O'Brien Brothers development went through all of the appropriate approvals, we've tried to accept that. It hasn't been easy to accept, but we've been living in a war zone for the past three years. Um, this is just beyond the pale that the city would be considering doing yet one more thing to disturb this neighborhood. We've been hanging on by our fingernails. It's only going to get worse once this huge development goes in on the other side of the road. In addition, it seems to me, because we've been following this so closely as we are severely impacted by this development, I was aware that there was a provision that had been suggested by the developer at their cost to provide what seems to me a much better alternative and a safer alternative for people wanting to bike or walk to connect to, to uh, the Tilly Drive area. So I'm just trying to weigh in very early. This is a fairly short run <laughs> uh, past a few houses that have been here long before all of this development has been allowed to go in. We, for years, were promised by the city that they would consider closing one end or the other of Old Farm Road once development was approved and allowed to go on here that would be impacting the neighborhood. The city has summarily reneged on any of those assurances we were given year after year. And frankly, I feel like this is just a slap in the face after everything, you know, we've, we've, we've tried to, um, you know, be good neighbors, weigh in in an intelligent manner, not just say no to everything, but I would really, really encourage the city to consider what they're, what they're talking about doing to this neighborhood. We also really rely on being able to have some parking along the road in front of our properties, you know, when that is allowable. Um, because of the fact that there's not significant driveway area. So I just hope that um, perhaps if the opportunity arises for someone to actually come and walk along this part of the road at some point, I would be more than happy to meet with you as I'm sure my, my fellow neighbors would. And I think that it would be shocking to see what impact what's being suggested would have on us. Uh, that, that's all I have to say. I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Marla. And I just want you to know I have walked that many times um, and I understand the issue. Well, thank um, you. I'm glad to you. know that somebody <laughs> has eyes on the ground. All right, um, Mr. and Mrs. Gates, are you still wanting to make comments? 
Yes, please. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Um, so we're, we're immediately next door to Mr. Henning. Uh, we haven't had the pleasure of meeting Marla yet, and she's two houses down, but so we're uh, new owners as of last summer of 75 Old Farm Road. Um, but we, I, I, a lot of what was already said, we fully agree with. Um, and yeah, I would just like to reiterate those comments. Um, part of what makes this section of Old Farm Road so special is kind of the history of it. And there's still, you know, the bike path would also take out, you know, 100 plus year old trees. Um, there definitely is visible ledge that it would have to, you know, deal with. Um, and it would pretty much destroy the front of our property, um, which as um, I can see someone that's been here 20 or 40 years, how disturbing that would be. And also as a new homeowner to suddenly find out this was going to happen uh, is sort of also shocking to us. Um, and, and I will say, We've been getting ourselves up to speed on the project. Uh, Andrew has spent uh, quite a bit of time going over the project with us, so we're very familiar with it. Um, but we we strongly object to this particular suggestion um, by the city. Particularly, I just wanted to say that um, I think one of the other neighbors mentioned that there are really good plans already in place in other in other locations. There's a lot of connectivity already with uh, Kennedy Drive. Um, I, I think it's really quite unnecessary. And then what, in reading the staff comments in preparation for this meeting, noticed in point 15 that there's even going to be just across the road, there's going to be um, a, a smaller type of path. So a path on both sides destroying our side of, um, of Old Farm Road seems really unnecessary and unfortunate when Andrew and the rest of the O'Brien team have completely thought about this and have really tried to be considerate of the neighbors and the neighborhood and the established properties that make this neighborhood what it is. And I think, you know, we we are really, we're looking forward to the, to the neighborhoods and the development. We knew about it going in. We were excited to be a part of a town. You know, we're from Vermont. We're from South Burlington. And um, we moved to Phoenix and we moved to Boston. We're, we're city people. Like, <laughs> we're, we're totally okay with city and um, construction and what it, what the future holds. But we, we bought our property for a reason. And it's, it's beautiful. It's established and um, and we would really like the board to reconsider um, based on what's happening here tonight. Thank you very much. We we will always consider comments. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to add a comment to this as well. Identify yourself, please. Yeah, I'm Taylor Forrest. I'm at 51 Old Farm Road. Um, thanks everyone for, for taking the time and listening. Um, I'm going to echo what everyone else said. I think it, it pretty much comes down to you know what what most of the folks on old farm road said that's not a viable option we got mature landscape that um pretty much runs across most of our properties we're definitely in a an area where it's like 25 at least 25 feet um maybe less from the road so like this is going to pretty much encroach on most of our properties and as far as the viability around this like doesn't make sense the duplicative effort around the connectivity around the we got Tilly we got Eldridge we got Kennedy like there's no reason we need to even entertain this and the fact that it's even on the table seems like we haven't done our due diligence so I'm here to help you can walk on my property I'll show you where it doesn't make sense um, Don it sounds like you, you take strolls feel free to, to swing by but let's figure out an, another way to kind of carve out a better spot for this thank you taylor anyone else um is there anyone else who would like to make comments or voice their opinion okay 
So thank you. And I think, Evan, it was a good suggestion to allow these folks to uh, speak early and not be burning the midnight oil with all of us. So let's proceed with the staff comments, shall we? Um, I'm waiting for it to come up on the screen, actually. Okay. Does it, uh, Don, does it make sense to, I mean, uh, do you guys have, uh, since we're on the rec path comment, um, feedback that, that you can share? I mean, have you, you know, do you want us to talk about more, you know, what our proposal was? I mean, that was one of the staff comments, I think number nine or something like that, um, that we are gonna get to. We can we can just get back to it or finish well, it let's, out. Let's, let's, let's deal with it now since we're talking about um, the bike path. I'm looking for nine. Uh, okay. Staff can... Staff considers the board should acknowledge the applicant's strong opposition to constructing a multi-use path south of the project area because of a desire not to impact uninvolved adjoiners, but nonetheless recommends the board require the path be constructed based on city goals and objectives, as described in the LDR comprehensive plan and recently completed Kimball Ave Community Drive, Tilly Drive network study. Staff is willing to meet with neighbors between now and final plat to address site-specific design issues. Staff recommends the applicant be directed to include this rec path in the final plat submittal. So... Hey, I have a question for staff. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, this, the study, as far as recommending connectivity, did the study, the study must have been aware of the challenges of homes on the edge of the right of way. I live over by Rice High School and yeah, the, I could, I'm looking out my window and I could, you know, toss my cat and land on the right, on the right of way there. So um, <laughs> did the study talk about this and yet still recommended it anyway? I have not read the study, Marla. What can you uh, help us with here? Um, that's a good question. It's been a couple months since I've read the study. The And I admit that I did not read the appendices. So it is not addressed in the body of the study. I cannot speak to whether it's addressed specifically in the appendices. Okay. I mean, my my limited, uh, you know, our experience working with VHB in in creating this uh, this plan that we proposed, uh, you know, we we discussed at length with them these challenges, and um, I'm not sure that the full uh, sort of com complexity of the the proposed path was. I, I mean, that, I, you know, they're not on the call. I certainly could check in with them on that, but. Um, you know, my feeling from conversing with them was we explained all of these challenges. We wound up with a plan that had an advisory lane and not a shared use path. Mm -hmm. An advisory lane? Yeah, so, it, you know, it's the, the concept that you, know, you would have essentially one, um, you know, 12 or 10 or 12 foot wide travel lane and you'd have two to five foot bike lanes on each side and, and basically traffic would have to alternate waiting for each other to pass while bikes, you know, went, you know, they went in and out of the center lane, sort okay. of a, a, a real controlled traffic environment. We had submitted, and I just, I, I don't know if the board has seen the photos we submitted for the last hearing um, of the areas that would be impacted, or if it's worth um, pulling those up. I, I just want to make sure that those were, um, you know, got through. Okay. Let me take a stab at this. It sounds like we need to put a pin in this and um, deal with it at another meeting. And in the meantime, maybe we can all look at that study, which is, I'm sure, posted on the website, Marla? Um, it's in your, it's been in your practice, and yes, it is posted on the website. Um, oh, awesome. I'd be happy to, and I will make myself a note to send an email to the board with the link to the okay, study. that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, so my suggestion is we're not going to resolve this tonight. So let's go back and start from the beginning and put it. Dawn, can I make a suggestion? Sure, always. Um, it may be that the board decides they have enough information to make a decision um, and can conclude without additional testimony. And, and it may not be, um, but you know, I would, I would encourage you guys to deliberate on it and determine whether you need additional testimony rather than plan okay. to. All right. So we would, not be we would not be closing this tonight. We would deliberate and then identify if we need any information. I think that we were hoping uh, you know, to get a little bit of guidance in terms of where you guys were at in terms of preparing additional submissions uh, with regard to this. I'm not sure that, well, so the that we would feel that we provided. One at a time. And go ahead and finish in Marla then. Sorry, I'm just, I, you know, I think that we would provide additional uh, supplemental testimony um, in response to feedback on the issue because we very much want to ensure that this is fully addressed that, you know we've we've discussed all of the different points uh, in it um, and so I, I think we were kind of hoping to get a sense of whether this was something that you were going to require and that we could provide additional testimony uh, as to you know whether this is something that that we would view as being able to be required by the board uh, but also there's a significant amount of information in regard to the Tilly drive study that I think we're talking about um, in regard to sort of what that study's intent was and its applicability to our project. And so I could talk about that a little bit now if, if that's helpful or, um, but, but I would say that we would want to uh, understand your position a bit more and be given a chance to have more, uh, to provide more testimony uh, rather than, you know, closing the hearing and getting your, your opinion via a decision that would then need to be. Marla, go ahead. What were you starting to say? I was going to say that the board is the um, quasi judicial body here and has the ability to make a decision. Um, I guess in response to what Andrew just said, it's not intended to be an open-ended discussion forever and ever. So if the board feels they can make a decision, the board should make a decision. Okay. All right. Well, let's proceed and we will see where we are in a little while. Um, let's go back to the beginning and start taking, chipping away at these comments one by one. And we certainly know that the shared use path is a, is a major issue. Okay. Staff considers the board should require the applicant to change all triggers to be relocated, related, sorry, to issuance of zoning permit applications. What do you guys think about that? I think we're fine with this condition. Okay. okay. We understand that I think staff's response was that it's, they can't really, they're not tracking sales, they're tracking zoning applications. So we understand. So we'll, we'll come back with a, uh, a proposal on how, how to track that. Perfect, thanks, Evan. Okay, number two. Thanks, Delilah. Staff recommends the board require the applicant to complete construction of the barn phase prior to a percentage of zoning permits and recommends the board determine what percentage would be appropriate. Applicant? Yeah, so we, this uh, specifically is dealing with the phase of um, when we would construct the improvements around the barn. Uh, we had proposed some sort of, you know, we haven't, we've conceptually proposed it at this point, some, uh, you know, a parking area and a picnic pavilion, uh, renovating the existing barn, cleaning up the site, planting trees and shrubs, as well as creating a rec path uh, connection that goes from uh, east to west through that area that we were just looking at on the VHP plan. Um, we had proposed that it would be essentially constructed when the units immediately adjacent to it were completed, that the barn lot would be completed. Um, you know, I think we would still like to tie it to the, the to that construction in some sense, uh, just because 
it's it's challenging to sort of complete the construction of those homes after you've put in a you know really nicely landscaped park that you know in the area that you would be driving through to access the home lots to build them um, and so i think just logistically it's a little bit tricky you know how do you do that um, you know we could certainly put a longer percentage on there so you know we could say 65 percent of the zoning permits and and we would feel pretty confident that that would get us uh you know those lots immediately adjacent completed but it also might deliver the park later uh you know than otherwise would happen you know if those homes sold early on um, so i think we're open to, to feedback here um but you know the 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 main thing was just that we wanted to complete the homes next to the area before we landscaped the area and completed the entire you know the entire park because we were planning on accessing for construction through there um so you know we i think the easiest thing would probably be to put a percentage on it as the comment requests um we pay at X percent or as soon as homes 31-1 or 33-1 to 33-9 are complete, if that makes sense. Um, Marla, would that work for us? Um, maybe. Can you show page 18 of the packet, Delilah? Because I have another idea. Just, I only say this one because it's, yeah, if you could zoom into that park at that area um, where the barn is. Can you zoom in quite a bit more? Am I getting it? Um, the park that's off of Old Farm Road next to the empty red square in the middle. So, so scroll to the left. Yeah. And then up a bit. There you okay. go. Um, so you were saying you were going to access via the back, but there's this sidewalk separating these homes. So what if you were just to build this part? and leave this stuff on the other side, leave the sidewalk for a later phase. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just really challenging to, to have, you know, finished beautiful landscaping immediately adjacent to, to that sort of, of activity. I, I mean, we, we would end up doing more harm than good and, and redoing the work, you know, multiple it's yeah you know, I, think, I, I think the other concern there is that when you're building those homes you're it is an active construction site too and so the proximity to the to the active construction sites can be challenging to manage so i i, I think we understand that the city would like to see the park created as soon as possible. And I think what we're looking for is a little flexibility to complete that zone. Um, but we understand that again, you know, that we, we need a trigger. And so, you know, it could be that the park is completed no later than the last home in lot 33, but has to start, you know, with, with one or two homes to go in terms of the, the zoning permits pulled. And so that there's, you know, we're, uh, we wouldn't do this, but there isn't the, you know, the perception that for whatever reason we would be sitting on the last home to to kind of punt on having to develop that that site plan i mean we we would like to get that done but it is a tricky situation there well evan i think what you described is exactly the concern like you know if if the if the phasing is approved as written as you proposed um you could just choose not to build one of the homes and then never build the park um so i think given those two options we would prefer to see um, the option that Andrew proposed, which is you know 60 to 70 percent of build, or all of those units, whichever comes first, over something that was tied solely to those units. I think I think we're comfortable Seems with that. Like a happy medium to me, it gives us a little bit of a, you know, it gives us a little bit of time to get those units done, and also gives you security that at 60 or 70 percent that we're, we'll have it complete. That's good. I think we're good with that. Great. Okay. Can we move on? 
Sure. Staff recommends the board discuss this specific proposal with the applicant. Oh, I think we just did that. I think we just did three. Four, staff consider. No, three is about a different area. Okay. This is the north end of Old Farm Road. Okay, sorry about that. Um, staff recommends the board discuss the specific proposal with the applicant. In addition to the general concept proposed, staff calls the board's attention to the applicant's alternative proposal to build the connection to Hillside as part of the Hillside project. While this is an interesting offer, staff notes it may require amendment of the Hillside master plan, that's right, and therefore should not be considered a workable proposal unless the applicant submits such as an application prior to flying final plat for East View. So, so there was some feedback at the last meeting uh, with regard to the timing of the relocation of Old Farm Road. Uh, we spent a lot of time looking at sort of logistically how we're going to manage the site and how we're going to construct things. We tried to figure out, you know, at what point would we be able to relocate this road uh, and do it feasibly in a way that sort of would allow the project to to, to move forward uh, and, and to not sort of get too much opened up or, or to be sort of uh, creating, um, you know, challenges within the, the project management. And, you know, we came back with a proposal that for the relocated Old Farm Road at that at 30 percent home sales, it would be started and at 45 percent home sold, it would be completed. Um, so before 50% of the homes were built, that Old Farm Road would be relocated uh, in its entirety in line with the goals that, that you all had put forward. Um, we, you know, that is accelerated from where we were originally, uh, trying to meet you guys, um, you know, where where you wanted us to be. Uh, and so, yeah, I guess the staff feedback is, is, you know, what do you guys think of that? And, um, you know, we'd certainly be interested in, in understanding that. Uh, but the current proposal is at 30% home sold. We would no later than then we would start it and be complete by 45%. Um, to the earlier comment, we'd have to adjust that to be zoning permits issued, but I think that, you know, we can, we can work that out. Yeah, I think Andrew summed it up perfectly. This is a situation where the board had some specific feedback and the applicant responded, and now staff is asking if the board is satisfied with the response. So they're now, so the feedback from the board was you can't do the old farm road relocation and connection to Hillside only when you build the commercial lot that has to be part of the residential project. And so now they're proposing to start with at 30% construction of the residential home, of the detached homes and complete by 45%. And how does that sound to you guys? I think it sounds reasonable. What, what do other board members uh, feel? Can, can I just interject uh, just to reiterate the point that Andrew made, you know, on, on the proposal that we've made, it is tied to the home sold as opposed to zoning permits pulled and with, stats, with staff's response to say they can't track homes sold, they would prefer to be on zoning permits pulled. We would want to adjust that because the, from the time a zoning permit is pulled to the time a home is sold, it's, a, you know, it's approximately eight months. And mm -hmm. so we would need to adjust that to allow us to have a little bit more uh, room there based on what we've proposed here. Is that doable, Marla? Can you live so with it? The question for you guys is, are you okay with the, the percentages? And then if you, you are, you know, we can, we can kind of defer that minor adjustment and have a discussion okay. about what that minor adjustment looks like to final plot. I'm okay with the concept. I'm okay with the with what's proposed by the applicant, except yeah, just you probably have to lower the percentage, if I'm correct. No, or, I think we would actually increase the percentage maybe, because right, maybe percentage, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Any other comments before we move on to number four? I just want to say I appreciate you guys looking at that again, and I think it's at least a reasonable compromise compared to what was originally proposed. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Alyssa. Number four, staff considers at least one of 
these amenity areas should be tied to a percent completion of the currently proposed residential units rather than the proposed triggers in order to provide appropriate amenity areas for residents and recommends the board discuss what percentage they consider appropriate. So board, what percentage, let's see, yeah. How big is this dog park? And I mean, how much actual physical work is it? I mean, I know there's an area, but how, how many amenities, how many linear feet of fencing are we talking about here? Yeah, the, the, well, so the dog park is, is I think about an acre, um, if I'm oh. not mistaken. So uh, it's a lot of fencing. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty substantial area. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I Andrew, it's about it's about nine hundred feet of fence. Okay. You know, I, I think our preference, you know, was this sort of uh, the dog park and stuff is sort of way more connected to the C one L R lots than than it is to the to the residential ones, and I think it would have a little bit of like an island thing going on being out, and then it would kind of be you know set up on its own. I, you know, the park, the linear park that's mentioned in the comment. We certainly can complete um, sooner in the process, um, and so I think that it would be our, our preference to, to complete that. Um, you know, I would point out that that the barn amenity, the open space fields on lot 18, and the playground on lot 19, the open space lot, are all part of the single family housing development as well. And so, you know, the, the amenities that we've tabled to be part of the commercial area are the playground and, and larger park at the end of the cul-de-sac road and the dog park. Um, this linear park we're happy to complete as part of the, the residential development. We had just tied it again to the construction of the adjacent homes. So the uphill homes in the red area there. Um, you know, and again, it's that same problem where you know, we're trying to, those homes are on big fills. They have retaining walls in the backyard. Um, and if you look at the map, our staging area is in the green and we're going to be cutting through that linear park for the duration of the construction with fill and and you know boulders to make those retaining walls um, from the you know the site storage areas in the industrial commercial lands. So you know we're happy to get that park in there. Um, I think it just we wanted to sort of have closed off that that access point, point. Um, and so I think logically it just kind of tends to be more toward the end of the project. What do you think, um, board? The 50% of projected trip end seems like an odd one. Say that again, please, Dan. Well, it says 50% of the projected trips. So we're looking, we're going to be measuring interim trip ends again or something. Am I reading that correctly? That, that was the proposal for the dog park construction, essentially saying when we've gotten to 50% of the projected trip ends for the commercial area, that that would be triggered. So it was a specific trigger tied to traffic, which you know we would be tracking as we permitted each use. Um, yeah. It seemed like a good metric to us. I mean, we could also do three of four, three of nine commercial lots are proposed, or, you know, uh, you could you, you could chop it up a lot of different ways. I, I think the other point that Andrew made is worth considering, though, which is that there is going to be a, a construction hall road running right past that area. And so you're essentially creating a boundary of the residential piece and then this, you know, um, where the dog park would be that, you know, the, if you had residential folks that were crossing over, they would be crossing over an active hall road. So again, you know, we're, we're sort of open to kind of looking at the phasing of all this, but I think that there's probably more logical parks to be looking at in the earlier phase. And again, yeah, I, I think, you know, we, we proposed a playground on, on lot 19. I'm not sure if the overall site plan is available or if I'm even reading the lot numbers right, but if in the, 
if you zoom in, you know, the sort of corner lot at the right of the metal loop area, uh, right, well, right there, you can see the park that's labeled in the upper left. That's where there's like a, a natural playground proposed. And you've got the park at uh, Hillside, which is existing, the recreational fields and the barn amenities all being proposed for the, you know, in the early part of the, the single family development. And again, I'm not pushing back on the, the linear park. I think to the staff comment number four, we can provide a trigger. I'm just saying that in order to sort of enable the, the hauling of materials in to build the roads and the homes, that, that that is the access point for that because we've intentionally made it that way to avoid going on Kimball Avenue and, and, and Old Farm Road and you know increasing traffic coming in on streets where we then have to sweep the roads every day for sediment and you know do all of these things to sort of protect um, for runoff and things. So, um, so you know, we could come back with a trigger or you guys could set a trigger at, you know, 80, 75, 80% of the homes or something like that um, with the provision for maintaining a haul road up through there for the duration of the project. Marlo, what do you think? I'm a little freaked out that there's a haul road through the middle of the project and it makes me concerned that I've missed all sorts of other big things. And I guess, I don't know. I'm just a little stuck on that at the moment. Okay, all right. Mar 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 that stuff will all be detailed when we do the EPSC plans. But again, we, we did propose, you know, the, you know, the, the storage and blasting area, you know, down on the IC lands. And so I, I think it's, you know, it makes sense that that be connected through the project, again, as opposed to going out and using city street to get material back and forth. So I assume I'm being naive, or I am naive. A, a hall road is like a rough road, not a public road for you to move large vehicles around and transport materials. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, I, I think, you know, you guys have likely been around Hillside and seen the sort of uh, amount of material that we're moving around to make this happen. And, there is a massive amount of material <laughs> and this project is uh, in many ways going to have more than Hillside did. Um, right. I think there's more earth movement. There's roads that are in enormously deep cuts, you know, six, eight foot deep cuts and you have to take that dirt somewhere. And it's either going down Old Farm Road and, and Kennedy Drive and through the city center, you know, in hundreds and thousands of dump trucks, or we're storing it on site and then recycling it when we get to areas of fills. Um, and, you know, we've designed the project essentially, as far as I can tell, to be neutral in terms of material, you know, going and coming. Um, and that's our goal, but that does require a significant amount of material storage and the ability to sort of move materials around internally. Um, right. Okay. Well, I think you know what we're looking for. Um, we will talk about this again sometime. <laughs> Number five, staff considers this to be a poor metric um, because the uses may never reach 75% of the projected trip ends and instead recommends the trigger be tied to the zoning permit for percentage of the lots accessed off IC road and recommends the board discuss what percentage they consider appropriate. So board members, I will turn to you. Really getting into the details here. What seems to be an appropriate percentage? That was a great plan that you had there, uh, the green one. Sure. Yeah, and then the area that we're looking at is the IC area down on the lower right. There are six lots proposed in that area. We're fine with this condition being tied to percentage of lots. We just, again, we were just using trip ends because we thought it was easier to sort of. Okay. 
All right. So it, would, it just seemed like it accommodated more potentially if you had a really heavy use or a trip heavy use that was only on one lot that it would you know, trigger it earlier, right? Um, but. Okay, let's move on. On the flip side, if you had a bunch of stuff, it would. So I, you know, I think we would say, you know, within, uh, I think 50% of the lots would be probably good by us. That seems immediate to the board. Half of the lots would trigger the path. I have no problem with that. Marla, can you live with that? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, yeah, um, Don, if I can just weigh in real quick on this. Sure. I think, you know, I missed part of the discussion. I just stepped away on the previous one about, and, but I did catch the tail end of the trip ends discussion of this one, you know, and I just want to throw out a blanket statement in regards to the triggers and the things that, that are, you know, triggering these amenities is, you know, I think everyone acknowledges this is going to be a construction site and a construction zone for many, many years. But that said, you know, the people that are buying into this neighborhood and this development are buying into, you know, the future use of it and the future completion of it, but they also know what they're getting into initially. So you do have to provide some of these amenities earlier on, even if it's at the detriment of the initial construction, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of developments where like the playground and the rec path goes in and then the houses get built around it so that you know the people that are that do buy in early have those amenities to use and they acknowledge that you know the the, the per periphery and the perimeter may be a construction zone for a few years but it's new neighbors that are coming in so i mean in terms of the triggers i, I think the 50 percent is fine on this one um, but in terms of the other ones, you know, I think we're looking for balance that allows for the amenities for the residents that are buying in early, but obviously the protection of the residents that are coming in early, but ultimately, you know, so that, that's enough on that subject, but. Thank you, Mark. Any other comments by board members? All right, number six, staff recommends the board find that the phasing plan is generally satisfactory if the above elements are addressed, but that the plan must be amended, clarified, and reviewed all together at final plat. I think, I think uh, you know that, yeah, okay, good. Uh, okay, moving on to comment number seven. Staff recommends the board review the above seven recommendations and determine which to require the applicant to address. And so those seven are in blue. Wondering, Delilah, if you can show them on the screen, please. Do we still have Delilah? Yes, I'm still here. Oh, good, okay. There's a delay on my Adobe. Oh, okay. All right, and again. I see the um, must be about the one, two, three, four, fifth bullet down on the bottom of page three there. Extend the shared use path. Yeah, is that what we just discussed? Yes. Right, so that one. Um, yeah, I think this is a briar patch we should keep the developer out of at the moment. Okay. I, I, as, as, as long as it looks like there's that planned connection to IC Road and ways to get to Tilly, because Tilly's going to have, I don't know, a thousand, ten thousand jobs or something like that. So it would be nice if people could bike to work, you know, or whatever, or go yeah. to that little grocery store. So, which is wonderful, by the way. So, it needs more food. It's pardon? In there. It's empty in there. It needs more stuff. But the sandwiches are great. The sandwiches are great. Yeah. Highly recommend. Well, I appreciate that feedback, Dan. 
Um, I, you know, in terms of these six traffic items, uh, I don't think that we have any real challenge addressing them um, and working through them at Final Plat. I would say, with the exception of the roundabouts um, and potentially the point one regarding the internal capture estimate. So, if you know, we took a look at the roundabout suggestion, and he suggested that we look at roundabouts on old, on Kimball Avenue instead of traffic lights. And the size of the roundabouts needed to accommodate the amount of truck traffic on Kimball Avenue is extraordinary. Um, and, you know, we had submitted a letter today. I'm not sure if I got it to Marla in time, um, but essentially the roundabout would be so big that the roundabout would be almost touching John Wilkins' buildings in the parking lot, you know, the front of the buildings adjacent to Kimball Avenue. Um, and to construct that, we would then need to essentially remove Kimball Avenue and move it onto our property further, you know, south for hundreds of feet to reorient the roundabout into a massive hillside, which is the side of our property, having, you know, I don't know, 10 foot, you know, caning wall on the south side of it. So, you know, that's our sort of preliminary look at the roundabouts. And so we are, you know, I believe his recommendation was that the roundabouts should be looked at because they have a little bit less of a maintenance, long-term maintenance costs for the city. Um, but I think that the sort of impacts of that amount of construction on Kimball Avenue, when compared to the sort of ability to add a traffic light and create a signalized intersection, which is in keeping with all the other intersections in the area, you know, we would, we would appreciate not needing to go down that road. Um, and so, you know, if the feedback was that that, that particular comment could be, uh, you know, considered satisfied, um, that would be helpful. Sounds like a big project. Um, so I would just respond that yes, we did get something from the applicant this afternoon. Um, no one has had a chance to review it. Um, I, some of you were on the board for the FedEx application where we reviewed a roundabout um, at the easternmost intersection of Community Drive and Kimball Ave, and that roundabout was designed to accommodate the very large articulated trucks for the FedEx facility. Um, and so, you know, it's not the traditional roundabout with um, a gigantic circle in the middle is certainly not what the technical review had in mind, but because it's a technical review and no one has really had a chance to look at the analysis that they performed, um, I don't really want to say whether, and I don't recommend the board say whether the, the analysis they provided is appropriate at this time. Um, the recommendation is to do this for final plot. Um, I don't know how comfortable the board would feel about saying, you know, we'll review that for final plot, or if you wanted to take some more time at this preliminary plot stage and um, review it before concluding this hearing. I think that they're saying that we would need to get this settled at preliminary. Um, the amount of design and work, you know, that would go into this um, would be substantial. We wouldn't know what to present at final plat if we didn't know what the direction was. So, uh, yeah, I think Andrew, what I'm saying is that what I've seen from your initial memo is that you've gone way too big um, compared to what um, what we have seen in the same roadway on other um, projects. So um, potentially it's not as, not as terrifying as you're thinking, um, but it may not be the right solution. I just think I'd just like to point out one quick practical difference between the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the park roundabout and a potential one here is that that one, the one on Community Drive, is that's a very flat area in basically every direction. Whereas this, you, you have anyone who's driven down Kimball Avenue on the side, you're looking up at a steep hillside on the O'Brien side, and that's that's not very conducive to you know a, a wide flat anything such as a roundabout. So. 
So I just think that's a, a, a practical difference that you can understand immediately. Yeah, we 100% appreciate you guys have not reviewed the letter. Um, it sort of, you know, if if we could, I think what we would need is to get feedback on whether that is something that we should be proposing prior to moving on to final plat, because I think that, the you know, we would need to propose it um, and we would need to design it versus designing sections and traffic lights in conformance with the current plan. So. Um, that's something that I guess we'll have to get feedback on at a, at a continued hearing. Well, so the preliminary plot comes with a decision. Is that not feedback? Well, we've not provided, I think, I don't think we've sufficiently analyzed the, the alternatives to, to sort of. So you're saying the memo you submitted today is not your analysis? Certainly, it would be acceptable to us to say that a roundabout is not required, but I think that saying a roundabout would be required without the opinion of, you know, our expert being, you know, balanced against the opinion of another expert who were both looking at the same set of facts would, would sort of be premature. I, I think deferring to our expert would, would make sense because he's familiar with the site and with the area. Um, Mr. Jackamard is you know, from out of state. I'm not sure that he had a full grading plan or understood the road geometry in the area or the truck counts and, and specifics. It, it would be good, I think, for the two of them to connect, to get Justin Rabideau's opinion on it and for us to understand all that. Um, so can this be dealt with offline? Yeah, I guess if the board decides they want to continue on this issue, I'm, I'm feeling a little frustration that um, it seems that if the decision is in the applicant's favor, they're good to close the meeting. But if it's essentially going to be something they're dissatisfied with, the meeting needs to stay open so they can argue about it more. Um, so, you know, that's my general frustration here. Okay. Other board members want to weigh in on this? I mean, the potential impacts of, I think, are something that we would want to have be made plain. So if there is an alternative proposal for something smaller, I think that that proposal should be evaluated by our expert as to whether or not it's viable prior to the board making a decision to require it. That's what I'm asking for. So if, you know, we've determined in our expert's opinion that this is what is required and that it's unfeasible because of the amount of work that would need to be done to accommodate it. If there's an alternative opinion as to a different proposal, I think what we're asking for is the ability of our expert to provide his feedback to you on that prior to a decision being issued to require. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm totally confused because it's like we're being asked whether to tell you to complete the evaluations that you're saying you're going to do your own in-house evaluations and present it to the board. How is this not what we were sort of just discussing? What, where am I missing the disconnect? Well, so we provided a letter analyzing and evaluating a roundabout and uh, I've submitted it to, to you guys today. I think that uh, Marla suggested that potentially our expert's opinion as to the size and complexity and scope of the roundabout is incorrect and that a smaller roundabout could be required or could be completed. Uh, what I'm saying is that if the board decides that that could be accurate, that we'd like a chance to review the specifics of that proposal and have our expert review it prior to a decision being made to say, pursue a roundabout in your final plat filing. Um, we just don't, we, we just have the opportunity to sort of review what that looks like. Okay. Um, so where do we go from here? Marla? I think we're happy to have the city's public works director review the memo from our technical person and to provide an opinion that we can review prior to closing the hearing. I think that's all we're asking for. Okay. Marla, can we can we live with that? Yep. Okay, all right. Let's move on to number eight. 
Staff further recommends the board require the applicant to establish an ex executable plan for evaluating when each planned, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading, planned off-site improvement be required. Staff for the record, executable plan for evaluating when each planned off-site improvement be required. Okay, didn't, didn't we already, does this relate to amenities? No, this is for um, the, and I apologize. I think this was like the last thing I wrote before I totally crashed and burned after my second COVID shot. Um, Cause the grammar's terrible. This is about the like um, traffic signals that are offsite that need to be retimed or rejiggered in some way because of the traffic impacts of this project. Um, how do we know when those are needed? And how, not, not just in a general, like they are needed when they reach level of service F, but like, how, what is the specific plan for determining whether that trigger is reached? That's, um, and so that's something that can be done at final plot. We're happy to do that. Okay. Yeah, I will say. Yeah. Great. Okay. Now we're coming up on nine, which we've already discussed in great detail and we'll discuss in more detail, but it is our thinking that numbers nine through 31 are a group of comments that um, staff have made. And we'd like to kind of take these together and ask you, Evan, Scott, and Andrew, if there are any that you can't live with. <laughs> Be, are there any that um, you can't incorporate and, and make work? I think we can, um cruise through them pretty quickly um, and, and let you know that uh, number nine is a requirement that I think that we, we cannot live with and cannot make work. Um, right. I've spoken to that. Uh, what I'd like to point out to you guys with regard to the Tilly Drive study um, is that it's referenced here. The Tilly Drive study looked at a, a large area, right? It looked at a number of different projects that were being proposed. And they calculated in the study how many trips the build out of the Tilly Drive project area would generate. And the build out was going to generate 5,821 trips. They looked at our project, and our project was 854 of those 5,800 trips, which is 14% of the trips. Currently, our project right now is proposing a number of the rec paths uh, within within that plan and in that project area, they said it, these roadway improvements, these three or four additional roads are needed and these shared use paths are needed in order to accommodate the demands of all of these 5,800 trips, of which O'Brien is 14%. Currently, O'Brien Brothers Project is constructing 26% of the rec paths that are looked at in that study as being required. And that's excluding this additional portion down Old Farm Road. 14% of the trips and 26% of the shared use paths. And that's based on two different metrics we looked at, both the linear footage of path proposed and the dollar cost of paths proposed that were outlined in the study. So using the study's own numbers. Um, and so, you know, we're proposing about 27% of the lineal footage, 25% of the shared use paths, and we have 14% of the trips that that study was looking at. Um, and the last thing that, that you know, I wanted to point out about the study was that the last sentence of the study is that the city should, that, that the transportation demand strategy should be integrated into the official map assessed for impact fees and prioritized in the city's capital improvement program. So the conclusion of the study is that there should be a mechanism created by the city to allow for all of these projects that are generating the 5,800 trips to contribute proportionally to the, to the strategies and shared use paths that are needed by all of them. Um, and so we feel that the 26% of the cost of the shared use paths and the 27% of the proposed lineal footage of paths that we're proposing is certainly our part. Okay. So 
So uh, I can, let me just fly through the other ones. Uh, yeah. Comment number 10. Can I, can I just ask a question? Because uh, what are the next steps for nine? I, just, I don't know what's going I'm, on. I'm sorry. Um, this is not a time when we take public comment. There will be opportunities for that um, at the next continuation of this hearing. So the nine is going to be in the next next round. Is that what it is? I just didn't. There was no. What's like? There was no definitive next steps other than we went back to the beginning and said there's going to be discussions. I'm trying to figure out like what what's going on with nine. Like what are what are we doing? Like what's the next steps? Are you guys collaborating? Are we talking about it in another meeting? Like what's going on? So this hearing will not conclude tonight or not be closed tonight. It will be continued at a later date. And at that time, there will be an opportunity for public comment. Is that like, where, when do I find out the later date? Is this? Um, it will be posted in the other paper. We'll make that determination before we conclude this tonight. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, comment, uh, comment number 10, uh, I believe, is relating to connecting a, a shared use path through into the hillside development. Um, we, we're looking into that. Uh, I think that we should, we, you know, we've demonstrated this east-west connectivity is important. We, you know, we see that that's part of the VHB plan that we've proposed. Uh, and so, you know, we are going to look at whether we can locate that rec path. Uh, in the existing hillside neighborhood and find a way to, that makes that work uh, with the houses that are there. It, it was, uh, in honesty, it, it was meant to end at Two Brothers Drive um, and that it was shown to continue down in Two Brothers Drive to get on the Eldridge Street path. Uh, but there, we, you know, we recognize the merit of the request, so we'll look into it for final plan and make a proposal. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. 11, we're fine with, 11 um, revised. Uh, on the, the multi-use path width, um, going from eight feet to 10 feet, I think that we do have some concerns about it that are primarily aesthetic, um, in, especially in front of the townhomes proposed on the Meadow Loop Road, fronting on Old Farm Road. Uh -huh. I think we would prefer that that portion stay at eight feet, uh, but that's- Can you say that again? What section? The section in front of the Meadow Loop townhomes between the townhomes and Old Farm Road, we've got these really small setbacks um, for the townhomes. And just the way that, you know, the path looks at Hillside, uh, the Hillside path is only eight feet wide. And if you sort of walk it or look at it, it almost looks like a parallel road and the proximity of the homes being close to the street and the path being so wide, we just think aesthetically is, is sort of uh, unattractive. So we think eight feet is, is a good width, uh, but that, you know, we're, we can do whatever the board requires on that. Yeah, so for, for, Andrew, oh, sorry. Well, I was gonna say for reference, if anybody's curious, um, if you were to go out to O'Brien Farm Road, uh, drive through the townhouse portion of Hillside, on the west side, so the downhill style townhomes, there's the eight foot community rec path, which is, I think, more than sufficient. Um, but it also, with the close proximity to the homes, it really does create a smaller dooryard for them. And it's typically the standard to have five five feet, 10 feet, five feet for, for people going in each direction. Um, whereas eight, an eight foot path would be four feet for people going in each direction, whether it's a bicyclist or a cyclist or a jogger. So we also can you pull up page 20. And I think the comment here, comment number 11 or whatever it is we're on, um, I think the comment, you know, specifically says, this is a general comment and site specific exceptions are reasonable requests to make it final plot. Um, here on page 20, oh, let me get there. You can kind of see the area that Andrew's talking about, um, you know, I think that's 
if, if they're okay with sort of the general statement that rec pads are 10 feet wide and then in this area um, it makes sense to have it be narrower, then I think that everybody's in agreement already. Well, I think to that point, um, the way that you worded the comment that we would agree and we would just propose exceptions at final plat. If that, if that. Okay. All right, I'm getting concerned about the time. Let's move on to 13. 13 Andrew. is great. 13, okay. 14, good. 15, no problem. Uh, we're happy to extend infrastructure to the project border. Uh, that sort of, you know, we historically okay. been the, the, you know, the process. Um, 16 is about extending the sidewalk uh, connection between two parts of our neighborhood across the front of um, the farmhouse property that we do not own. Uh, I think that, you know, we're open to this as well. Okay, 17. And I'm not reading these because- yep. 17, uh, 17 is fine, we'll, we're, we're gonna- good. 18. Uh, so on 18, we did have uh, a minor uh, request. So the specific provision is that the Legacy Farm Extension Road would be built all the way to the property line. The regulation allows for us to build it to the property line or to, to contribute the cost uh, of completing the roadway connection. We'd prefer to contribute the cost uh, because of the coverage problem, and we have, you know, we have a, a severe coverage limitation, and so we would rather not build that coverage. Uh, in the future, that coverage will be in a city right of way and won't count against our development. Um, and so we would we would propose the cost rather than the construction. Uh, except, okay. Madam right. Chair, Madam Chair, yes. go ahead, Dan. Yeah, for ease of the public who may view a recording of this meeting, can we ask that Delilah zoom in and scroll through these numbered items as we talk about them? Thank you, that's a great suggestion. I am on them. I'm we see a map. Open space plan. Oh. Sorry, it had gone into pause. There we go. And again, zoom in as much as you can as we go. You can Thanks. also zoom in from your computer. Oh, oh, I know I can. It's more the the recorder, whoever. Right, right, right. Okay. Thanks. So um, I think the comment 19 about the walking path uh, through the open space running parallel to the IC road um, is something that, you know, we, we did want to talk about, it might make sense to just make a comprehensive proposal on these, these walking path at, at final plat and, and to table this conversation. I think, you know, we're interested in sort of understanding what that wildlife corridor looks like, um, you know, having a path through it, what the path can look like and sort of what the grading and retaining walls and different aspects of that area are gonna be, how suitable it would be for, for the path to begin with. So. I think uh, we have, you know, a few concerns with with this specific comment, um, and with sort of running that path uh, in this new configuration. So we can we can happy to talk about it with you guys now, um, but I think we might have more information to sort of triangulate this and make a better proposal. Uh, you know, for instance, the rec path currently is just kind of roughed in here trying to make the grading work. And I think, you know, we're likely to fine tune this proposal for this open space with our landscaping plans at final plat. So I would recommend we just push on this. Okay. Number 20. 20 was good. 21, uh, I've got okay, great. Thank you, no problem. Great. 23 uh, revised plans to include legacy farm extension extended to the end of the right of way. So again, the same request to contribute the cost rather than the uh, build the road. Okay. Uh, 
I think 24 and 25 we're talking about uh, late like road widths. Um, and I think Scott reviewed this. I think that these were all we were fine with all of this. Is that right, Scott? The road width? We're, 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 happy to we're happy to reduce the road widths. Okay, and I had a conversation with Justin about it. Okay, good. 26. Well, looks like I've got a little bit of a hole in my uh, 26 is still road widths, right? Yeah. Yes. So that's 26 and 27 are good. Okay, curb cuts, 28. Yeah, I think these 28 was fine. 29 consolidating curb cuts. Uh, Scott, I did, I must have missed these couple of comments, but 30 is 30. Did you talk about that, Scott, increasing the road base layer to two and a half inches? Yeah, that, that, that's fine. That's, that's something that's become more typical over the last five, 10 years. Just increase pavement depth. Great. Okay, and 31. Complete roadway plans are, yeah, they're absolutely going to be part of final plan. Okay, all right. So, um, so there are 19 more comments. Um, I am thinking it's getting late. I think we're all tired. And I'm thinking that we should um, uh, conclude this hearing for tonight. Do we have to vote on that, Marla? Two. Um, no. Yes, you do. Sorry, I guess I'm tired, too. Um, so the things that are outstanding are pretty significant, and we pushed them from the last time. So there's been no discussion as of yet of the C1 LR zoning district. Um, there's some, um, yeah, so almost, I guess half of the remaining comments are about the C1 LR. Um, and then we talk about the IC and open spaces and then go into some more depth on waivers. Um, I got three new applications in on Monday. I'm wondering if we just kind of take time for a special meeting. I don't know if people have the energy or the time for that. I'd be fine with a special meeting, you know, an additional meeting. I, I have more time and energy for a special meeting than to keep going tonight. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Mark. Yeah. yeah what you're saying is I asked okay. at the right time. <laughs> what did you say, Marla? Yeah. So I asked at the right time is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. you know just how to push our buttons. We're ready to, <laughs> whatever you say, dear, as the saying goes. <laughs> yep. Um, so... We don't really need to do any additional prep work. Um, I do rather like Tuesdays. What do people think? Do we want to do next Tuesday, the 25th? Were you nodding your head no, Alyssa? Tuesday is the absolute worst day for me if anyone else is open to any other day. Oh, okay. Let me check My the schedule changed after returning to work from COVID lockdown, and Tuesday is my Friday. Okay. <laughs> Let me check the really calendar to see what other meetings are. I assume that okay. applies to tonight as well, so we should apologize. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Andrew. I, I was made a joke. We should apologize for tonight as well. If tonight's for Friday, I, I feel bad. I bet, yeah. Mm. Like Marla is planning her calendar. Dan, so, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty flexible, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty flexible. Next week is pretty good. Monday? Wednesday. I'm really easy. 
Yeah, honestly, as long as I put it on the calendar, I can get away with it, so. I would love to do a Wednesday or a Thursday if that works for people, but. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna be able to decide to uh, commit tonight or right now. Yeah. Monday. I cannot do Thursday, the 27th. Yeah, Monday or Wednesday would work for me. Mm -hmm. um, somebody tell me the dates. 24th the 24th and the 26th. Does that, would Monday give you enough time, everybody, to think all this through? And We're just continuing on where we left off, correct? Right. Yep. Yeah. No, no new staff report, nothing. I mean, we're not prepping anything, we're just picking okay. it back up. Um, either it would be great if we had time to get the, that, you know, have a conversation with Justin about the couple of traffic items. I assume that can happen in a week. Want to do the Wednesday then? I'm good with that. Yep. Um, is anyone not good with Wednesday? I know, Jim, you can't commit, but. Okay. Uh, oh wait, there's a... Do you have to warn this, Barla? No, it's a continuation. Well, oh, there's a community hike webinar that would be conflicting with, I think that's fine. I mean, unless anybody really has a burning need to go to the community hike webinar. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm really tired. Okay, Wednesday, seven o'clock. Seven that time, same that station. Mm -hmm. So, what Great, thank you all. are we on? 32? Yeah. Yes, we start with 32. Um, can we hold off the minutes for next week, too? Yeah, but we do have to vote to... Yep. All right, I make a motion that we continue... Uh, whatever this number is. SD 2040. Yep. SD 2040, 500 Old Farm Road, O'Brien, Eastview to Wednesday the 26th at 7 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. We will see you next week. Uh, on Wednesday at seven o'clock. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, good night. Good night. Um, I, can we hold the minutes off till next week? We can. Okay. All right. Um, so, someone want to move adjournment? We do not need to do that. We no, don't. Do okay. okay. Let don't us. You're in charge. You just tell us to go to bed. Okay. Um, this is where the real power comes in, right? Yes. Um, okay, we are adjourned. Sleep well, everyone. We'll see you next week.